All right. Greetings. Um, today we're going to be playing a little bit more of Our Life. We're going to try to finish uh, step two today. I'm feeling pretty pumped. I think I can make it. Um, heads up, I am still sick, so I reserve right to end the stream early. <laughs> um, there's not too much I want to say before we get in, so I guess let's get started. Alright. You stared out the window, watching the scenery pass by as your mom drove down the quiet street at a leisurely, at a leisurely pace. A singer crooned sweetly from the radio, turned low enough that you could block it out if you wanted. You turned away from the window and your mom suddenly spoke up. Well, kids, are you excited to be going to the library? Yeah, can't wait to get there. Nope, I guess. Yeah, I can't wait to get there. Mom laughed, catching your eye in the rearview mirror and winking. I don't know why I asked. I already know how you feel about it. Taking a trip down to the library has always been something you enjoyed. What about you, Co? You're part of the conversation, too. Yeah. I like the library, and I can work better there than at home. Well, I'm happy this will be of use to you. Just make sure you're not distracted by one another. That would defeat the purpose of the trip. She grinned over at you briefly, so you knew she was kidding and meant nothing by it. Mon refocused on driving, humming along with the radio under her breath. He went back to staring outside. Oh, let me check on this tree. I should have done that before I dropped in. Alright. He went back to staring outside. As he passed one street, you caught a glimpse of someone in brightly colored clothing passing out balloon animals. It sparked a faraway memory, and you felt your lips twitching up before consciously remembering why. How long ago was it that you and Cove watched the amazing Alexander perform magic tricks? Hey Cove, do you remember that one guy? You kept the thought to yourself. Do you remember that one guy? Maybe. Maybe I do. Alexander, the amazing Alexander. He gave us dolphin balloons for free. This reminder, Co smiled faintly. Oh yeah, I wonder if he's ever there now. Maybe we should go more often to check. Maybe. You couldn't help the way your own smile curled up higher at the sentiment. You wanted to say something else, but couldn't quite think of what, and so just settled back into your seat. When silence filled the car again, you returned your attention to the window. It was an absolutely gorgeous day. You leaned your face to the sunshine, tempted to close your eyes as the gentle rays warmed your cheeks. Nin? Huh? You lifted yourself up a bit more, seeing your mom twisting her torso to face you confused from the front seat of the car. Next to you was nothing. Cove's car door was already open. You had reached the destination before you even realized it. I was asking, what time should I pick you two up? Oh, um, four should be okay. That should give you enough time to finish your summer assignments, or at least make large enough a dent. Thanks, Mom. You hopped out of the car, remembering to grab your backpack at the last second. Alright, All right, then. Have fun, you two. We will. Oh. Thank you, another TTV viewer, for coming to the stream. Hello. You closed the door, giving a little wave. She waved back. The two of you went right to the door of the library. Cove reached it first and tugged it open, stepping inside. He kept it propped open so you could pass through behind him. The air was much cooler inside the building than it had been for the few seconds he spent outdoors. The space was filled with the soft din of papers being moved and whispered voices. Hey, you seem kind of distracted on the right ear. Oh, I'm glad you noticed. Just enjoying the day. I'm excited to see Derek. Wanna walk around for a bit? Just enjoying the day. Cove looked dubious at the vague answer. Hi, Kanae. You, you started streaming right now, huh? <laughs> uh, sorry if that notification sound made it in. <laughs> okay. What? Don't you think it's nice out? I don't know. It's pretty much always nice out here. Your steady buddy was standing at the front of the library by a long rack of magazines. Predictably, he was flipping through one with various sports players on the cover, looking intense enough to burst off the page. His head snapped up when you walked over, beaming widely. Hey, Nin. Co? Hi, were you waiting for a while? Not super long. 
Derek put the magazine back in its place, then he gestured to the space at his side. Most of the tables were empty, only a few people leafing through books. There's plenty of room. In unspoken agreement, the three of you started moving towards the seating area, Derek taking two steps for every one of Cove's. Oh, guess what? I'm pretty sure I've mastered the fake shot. I'll show you some other time. Derek looked over to gauge the level of interest. Do you know it? Uh, soccer's not really for me. How does it go? Derek's eyes flashed with excitement as he explained. Well, you move the ball like you're going to go one way, and then... He demonstrated by running a few steps ahead and showing off some fancy footwork. You do it like this, so it does it like that. <laughs> you laughed, bobbing your head at his attempt to get the trick across with no ball. Shh. The three of you looked over to the checkout desk. The librarian stood behind it and... Oops. It was wearing a deep frown. You felt bad. You were apologetic. You didn't think it was a big deal. Apologetic. You mouthed sorry, and she sighed before returning to the book she was reading. Derek scratched his cheek, choosing to not let that derail things. So, what are you guys working on? What weren't you working on? There's some things you've gotten to start with. Yet, what, oh, what weren't you working on? I thought you were going to question him. You had yet to start a single assignment, sadly. You had yet to start a single assignment, because you didn't feel like it. There's some things you've gotten to start with. I was like that at 13. But it was still early in the summer, so there was a lot left. I think I'll work on my history assignment, math problems that need work, I don't care, I don't know. I think I'll work on history. You have to do this timeline thing. It made sense to work on that while you were here, since you probably need to consult the reference books. There's some summer reading, too. I have to go through an assigned book. But I'm not. But I'm going to do that later, since it doesn't need extra references or anything. I've already finished the reading. Oh? It's not that long, and it was way more interesting than last year's book. Good to know. What about you two? I've got a few worksheets. They look pretty easy. But my school gave us three books to read. Can't they just stick with one? I'm also doing the timeline. You all found a table close to the tall bookshelves and set up camp. Within seconds, pencils and folders and books were strewn out to the surface. Was strewn out over the surface. You focused on your work. You doodled. You just looked out the window again. Uh, knowing me, I would have been doodling. You lightly sketched on the paper, your tongue poking out between your lips as you did. You were in the middle of attempting a shark with toothy jaws open wide when you felt someone looking at you. You glanced up, seeing Cove looking over your scribbles. Cove's eyes rose to meet yours. It's nice. Are you going to do the rest? Add a second dorsal fin. He pointed to the spot on the unfinished shark. Yeah, thanks. You pushed forward with your scribbly creation. After some time, Cove shifted in a seat, twisting his back as if trying to work not sad at it. Feeling cooped up? Yeah, I'm going to get up for a little while. Okay, I'm going to stay here. I'm making good progress. I'll come with you. I'll stay too. I'll go with you. You might as well take the opportunity to refresh yourself before getting back to work. The two of you strolled away from where you'd been working. Your eyes roamed over the titles of the books as you passed by. Some were dull, some intriguing, and others were just strange, but you didn't spot anything that made you pause and pick it up. Looking for something? Reading assignments more than enough. Always. No, but something might catch my eye. Always. I tear through books. Hmm, I might go out of here. Uh, I might go out of here if there's enough time. This comment reminded you of the clock ticking away. Even after you finished your work for the summer, the countdown to the new school year would still be on track. Before you know it, we'll be back at class. Yeah, we just got out and it's almost here again. Are you looking forward to going back? Cove gave you a wry smile. No, I still never want summer to end. He was fully let his gaze go distant. He wrapped his arms around himself. You weren't sure if his longing was for the beach or for the concept of summer itself. Summer means you can do whatever you want. I like learning stuff, but the way the school does it. I want to grow up already. Cove didn't feel safe knowing it was others who, re who really determined what his life was like. You understood that much. But there are some things that are alright, like seeing your classmates and teachers again. He perked up at his own words. Maybe we'll even be in the same classes this year. I'd like that. A smile spread across his face, crinkling his eyes. What about you? Do you want to go back to school already? Yeah, I'm ready for school to start. No, I don't want summer to end either. I like summer, but I'm ready to go back to school when I got to. I don't know. No, I don't want summer to end either. It made you depressed just thinking about it. Cove nodded, obviously getting where you were coming from. 
There was really no getting away from the topic of school right now. It prompted you to think back to the classes you were in. Oh, think back to the- why did I see a comma there? You pursed your lips. History class was one you were looking forward to. English was enjoyable. Math kept your attention. Science fascinated you. You wanted to enroll in art. You didn't like any of them. English was enjoyable. You liked the books we had to read in English class. And the writing assignments were engaging too. And you wanted to enroll in art class. It wasn't mandatory at your school, but you definitely hoped to participate. And history class was another one you were looking forward to. There's so much out there to learn when it comes to the past. It would take ages to know everything. Science fascinated you. We hoped there'd be more cool experiments this coming semester. And that was all. Each lost in your own thoughts, you continued to stroll through the library for a little while longer until Cole caught your attention again. You should probably head back. Yeah, let's go. Before you could take a step back, Cole cleared his throat, avoiding your gaze. <clears throat> Thanks for listening before. Anytime. It's cool. You're welcome. Don't make a habit of it. Anytime, man. Cove smiled, his cheeks pink. He you jerked your head towards where Derek had been studying. Time to get back to work. Cove and you rejoined with Derek and settled back in as quietly as you can manage. Work continued as normal from there. The sound of scuffling of shuffling dragged you out of your head. You looked up, surprised to see Derek packing up. You're done? Derek casually shrugged, but you could tell he felt proud for the first to be the first finish. Uh-huh. Told you it wasn't anything hard. Wish mine was that easy. Was it even worth coming to the library for that? What are you gonna do now? What are you gonna do now? You wondered how Derek was gonna spend his newfound freedom. Maybe. I could look over I could look over what you're doing. Maybe you've got tips that'll help. That'd be great, thanks. No thanks. You nodded your head yes, shake your head no. Nodded yes. Gotcha. Aw. With a smile, Derek leaned over your part of the table. He took some time to get the gist and point you in the right direction before turning back eh, before turning it back to you. Derek leaned on the back of his feet. Okay, I'm gonna look around while you guys finish. See you. Bye. Bye. See ya. Later on, Cove shifted in the seat, closing his book as he looked over the notes he'd been taking. Glancing away, he contemplated what you'd done thus far, too. You finished most of the assignments. You'd say there was about half left. You still had a long way to go. You spent most of the time being unable to focus. Finish most. Just as you thought, it hadn't really been that difficult. You were sure you'd be able to complete your other work next time. Derek's advice made it easier in the end. Are you about ready? It's almost four. Yeah, I think so. Come on. Both of you gathered up your books, and after returning the ones you used for reference to their proper shelves, set off to find what, wherever Derek had wandered off to. He was in the biography section. His back was to the two of you, one hand above his head and the other supporting himself against the shelf as he strained to grab one of the books. Hey Derek, we're ready. Okay. I'm okay. He glanced toward the sound of your voice, then up towards the shelf he was trying to reach. I can get that for you. He followed his gaze and then took the book off the shelf for him. Derek? I can get that for you. Hmm? Yeah, thanks, Nin. Derek directed you towards the books you want the books you wanted. It was an autobiography of someone you'd never heard before. And then three of you moved to the front of the library to wait for your rides. You stood close to the window and let out a content sigh, feeling the rays warm you from the slightly chilly library interior. I wish our plan I wish our assignments were more exciting. He stared into space. Got any plans after this? He stared into space. The change of scenery was refreshing after so long at the same table. He watched the wind ticking, tickling the branches on a sycamore tree and making the leaves quicker. Quicker? Quiver. Oh, of course they decided to make noise in the kitchen right now. Oh, that's my dad's car. Derek lifted a hand to wave, pushing the door open and heading towards the blue pickup truck waiting in the parking lot. Talk to you later. See you, Nin. Bye, Cove. You watched Derek jog off before scanning the area for your mom. Get everything done? You got lost in your thoughts. Lost in your thoughts. I feel like I'll need to come back to the library again before summer's over. I'll come with you. I still have some stuff I can do. He smiled at the idea. Despite not working on the same thing, it'd be nice to have some company. I'm good with that. Hey, do you want to do something with me after this? No, oh, sure. Co seemed eager towards the offer. You hadn't exactly expected him to say no, but the agreement still made you happy. Two of you smiled at each other. 
It wasn't long before you spied your mom's car coming down the road. There she is. All right. Time to go then. You climbed into the car, sliding into your usual seats and buckling the belts. Hey kiddos, did you get a lot done? Yeah. Nice. Nice. The car shifted into action and you watched as the library shook into the distance. This would be the last time you saw it this summer. Even better, you're going to have good company with you. You're already counting down the days. You fielded questions from Mom while you tried to juggle a conversation with Co. When she learned you two were planning on returning, she immediately offered to give you a ride next time. You continued to answer Mom's questions about what you've been working on, and then told her about your plans to stick with Co after getting back. But soon enough, the trip was over. You arrived back at your neighborhood. Co would run over to his house real quick to drop off his stuff. You also made a pit stop to put your backpack away before heading out again. The two of you are grouped in the middle of the road, halfway between your houses. With everything wrapped up, you can now freely enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Your conversation resumed as you began walking on the streets together. For some reason, I expected that to be the end. <laughs> and I guess it is only four. The day's not over yet. The afternoon came... Uh, never mind. The, the day is over. The afternoon came and went. Dinner was eaten, and you were cleaning up the dishes left behind from it. Cove had elected to stay for the meal today. He passed you a couple of plates to rinse in the back in the back in the sink. Even though he didn't have to, Cove asked to do at least something to help. You scrubbed the last of them and let out a satisfied sigh. Okay, they're done. I'm going upstairs now. You're just your guest for the evening. Are you going to come with me? Yeah. Yeah, I don't have to go back till later. Take it easy, kids. Thank you for the help. When you got back to your room, you noticed your backpack from earlier. You figured it would be best to unpack the stuff you needed before going to bed. Cove plopped into your desk chair and spun around a bit as he got comfortable. He watched you contented as he walked across the room. He didn't need anything or expect you to try entertaining him constantly. It was just nice to be near each other, even when nothing was going on. You hefted your bag up onto the bed and sunk into the comforter. With that, you started to sort through books and paper packets. Not all of it were things you'd need anytime soon. A small pile of the most important assets began to grow the side of your backpack until you'd gone over it all. Hmm? You actually finished looking through the contents, but that wasn't all of your work. You instinctively pulled the opening closer to you and peered inside. A second look commenced, and then a third, and then you began to open the smaller pockets. You were missing your history assignment. And? At this point, Cole could tell something was wrong. There was a part of your summer work that you'd gotten done, and now it was gone. It hadn't been that noteworthy before, but the bag wasn't really zipped when you first began look to look through. The work could have fallen out somewhere if you had in the first place. You were upset, but made yourself stay calm. You started to panic. All you could do was shrug. Your stress level shot up. It was best to think positively. You felt paralyzed. Oh man, this kind of thing really got to me when I was younger. And especially, and like, it still gets to me now, honestly, for getting work. My stress level shot up. It was gone, and now you're going to have to replace everything you did for it. My history work isn't in my backpack. At your word, Cove jumped out of his seat. Oh crap, is there somewhere we can look? The bag was kind of open, so... He went sympathetically. I left a lot of options for where it might be. Most of them bad. You made a sudden bolt for the other side of your room. You started to scour the spot the backpack was originally left in. With nothing in sight there, you expanded the search for the rest of the space. Cove did his best to stay out of your way while keeping an eye open for your missing work. It was frantic and ultimately fruitless effort. Your assignment wasn't there. Let's check downstairs. It might be still be in your house somewhere. Fine. Why, hello again. Is everything alright? You told your mom what was going on. You gave a rambling explanation of the situation. You answered her with a raised voice. Panicking. Rambling. <laughs> no, it was. I had it. I did it when I was getting it out of there. It wasn't there and I don't know. What? What? My schoolwork is missing. This is definitely getting to you. You have things that you wanted to do that you need to do and instead you have to worry about this. Sweetie, I am so sorry. What's missing? An assignment for school from the library today. Mom's eyes raised with concern at the answer. That's a pickle. I'll call right now. I think they might still be open. Thanks, Mom. Don't worry about it. That's not going to help. You let her go without a word. Thanks, Mom. You're welcome. You're welcome. Just leave it to me. Go, oh, honey. Can you tell us if there was anything you noticed? You were with Nin, right? I saw the assignment when Nin had it out of the library. I don't remember them putting away, but I'm pretty positive there was nothing left on the table when we were done. He spoke resolutely. Before now, he hadn't considered that something might have been left behind. He'd felt the same when leaving. Well, it was not. Well, it was hard not to second guess things now. 
My mom re entered the scene a few minutes later. The look on her face was not promising. So I got a hold of the librarians. They don't have any papers with your name on them. Not that they could see anyway. I'm sorry. Thanks for trying. Okay. We had no reply. You grown in frustration. Thanks for trying. Of course. Sorry it was a bust. It's not your fault. Nin, hey, let's go over to my house. I can check my bag. Maybe it took maybe I took it while we were packing up and didn't notice. Yeah, while we're out there, we should probably check the car. Good idea. I don't want to. Alright, it's not gonna be there. Good idea. You got the impression this wasn't just about another place to look. You were stressed over the situation here, and he was trying to give you an out. So Cove nodded and made his way to the door. Your mom stood by with creased brows. Take care, kids. Good luck. Bye, moms. You risky made the trip across the street, and in less than a minute, you were going over the th you were going through the threshold of Cove's house. Cove had been in a rush earlier today. His backpack was tossed on the couch without a thought. No one had moved it since then. You can sit down or anything. I'm gonna look. He lifted up the backpack and zipped it in a fluid motion. You were left to wait as he rooted around inside with an unexpected level of seriousness. There was no way you could relax. You were actually calming down now. Calming. That was def there was definitely some panic earlier, but you had a little time to sort your thoughts. Whether you found it or not, you'd be able to make things work. Still, it wasn't possible to stop Clove on its quest, so you tried to relax in the meantime. Eventually, he sighed heavily. Clove's arm was still tucked away and sighed, but the search was over. Sorry. It's not your fault. It was obvious there wasn't much of a chance Clove somehow had it this whole time. He just shrugged. It's alright. He brought the backpack to the floor in ceremony as he and spoke with a cautious tone. Is it? Are you... you're really okay? I really am. I can get another coffee and rewrite the stuff. It's nice of you to ask about it. That's cool. I'm glad. Cove laughed lightly and you noticed a small shake to it. He was clearly relieved you were going to get through this. It was sweet. He'd been more upset about the loss than you. And I think it's admirable how you can keep it together like that. You were flattered, he thought so. You were grateful towards him. He silently accepted the praise. Grateful. Thanks, Co. It's easier to feel okay, because you're with me. He had to gain some courage to be that forward. Returning the favor was too much for him, and Cove broke eye contact. <laughs> Don't give me credit, I'm trying to compliment you. <laughs> and the moment was interrupted by the piercing ring of the Holden home phone. You wordlessly stared at one another with raised brows. Cove's mouth formed a tiny frown. While we were gone, they probably looked in the car. Kara appeared from the hall on the far side of the living room, summoned by the noise. Hey, Co. Hey, man. I didn't know you were here. She strolled on past. Your eyes followed her. Cove's mom answered the call, giving a chipper greeting to whoever was on the other end. Oops. A few uh-huhs and mm-hmmms later, Kyra thanked the person and placed the phone down once more. Nin, that was your ma. You said you, she said your stuff was in the car. What? Really? That's what I was told. Now I'll just return to the guest room. You can have your privacy. Yeah, I was... I was gonna say... Well, I mean, I did say we should check the car. <laughs> Coast face recycled... Recycled. Coast face cycled from shock to sour as his mom made her escape laughing. He shook the interruption off and refocused on you. They've got it. As you guessed, this wasn't gonna be a big deal. They've got it. Co smiled quickly and shrugged one shoulder. We should probably head to your house. Your mom might want to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, my parents really care about me. They kept searching even after you left, and because of it, that, it all worked out. Cove nodded in agreement. Cove, it means a lot that you're stuck. That you stuck with me. Thanks. He brightened up with sparkling eyes. Any time, Nick. While stepping toward the door together, there was a thought in your head that you knew to be true. You're going to be there for one another. With the small things when it came to the big things. Alright. Next would be Escapade. Uh. Before we get started on Escapade, I'm going to go on my own Escapade to the kitchen to get a drink. <laughs> I'll be right back.
I have returned. I have brought a snapple peach, so I will ring the fact. I will read the fact. A caterpillar has more muscles than a human. How interesting. Paid. I, I really love the ones where we sneak out with Ko. <laughs> oh, we're doing things that we absolutely should not be doing at night with Ko at any point. <laughs> like, um, I think my favorite so far was when he, uh, he spent the night by accident. <laughs> he looked up, noticing the sun was finally setting. He'd been trying to delay the end of the day for as long as possible. The evening breeze tickled your nose as you sat on your front porch, munching on fresh watermelon slices. Made you happy? You thought watermelon was okay. You were eating it just because watermelon was a summer tradition. You weren't even sure why you were eating it. Made you happy! You picked up another slice. Even though you had already had dinner, you were still delighted to make room for watermelon. You turned to look at Cove. You'd both been sitting in comfortable silence for a while now. He sat next to you, close enough for your shoulders to touch. He was happily absorbed in his thoughts and his own slice of watermelon. Chuckling, he watched as his face twisted in discomfort. He had to stop chewing to spit a seed into the bush. She cried in disapproval. You know, he did the same and spat a seed into the bush. Bet I can spit a seed farther than you. I hate it when people spit in my yard. <laughs> this has always been an issue for me. But do I want to make him... Do I want to shame him? How big of a- I can't say s How big of a shrimp am I? Also, why is my camera suddenly not working for some reason? It is not capturing my face. Every time I put Come on. There we go. You know, as a, I mean, even though I hate it when people are spitting in my yard, I think that turning this into a game would be fun. I bet I can spit a, I bet I can spit a seed farther than you. Immediately, you shoved the majority of what was left of your watermelon slice into your mouth just to get a seed to prove your point. As soon as you could, you sent that seed sailing right into the middle of the street. See that, Cove? Cove burst into laughter that slowed into a wild, into a wide grin. You could tell he was equal parts surprised and impressed. Can you do that again? I didn't see where it landed. Of course I can. You popped another seed into your mouth and focused where the last one landed. Setting the seed free, you got it to go even further this time. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad? You had Cove chuckling again. It was taking a lot of focus to say looking serious and not breaking a laugh to yourself. I'd like to see you try. I will. Cuff took a mouthful of watermelon, face grimacing when he had the seed. Then his expression morphed into a focused look and he sent the seed flying, landing in a similar spot to yours. Wait, you gotta do two. I, I need another try. He spoke before you could even comment on his non-victory. His determination got you laughing. He quickly sent another closer to where your second one landed. Scenes are evenly matched, for now. Yeah. yeah, for now. For the next several minutes, you both kept carving seeds from your slices and gr giggling at the ridiculousness of the competition. Eventually, a truce was called, and you both went back to eating that neglected watermelon flesh. Flesh. Hmm. hmm, I wonder if I'll have another slice after this one. Now one's your third already. Is that bad? It tastes really good. You bent with your shoulder, unable to resist, you knocked the mostly finished slice out of his hand. You smile at him. No, it's alright. It's definitely bad. He sighed affectionately. Wait, I want to know how seriously this is taken. I don't want to knock it out of his hand, but I'm wondering why that would even be an option. Hey! There was no chance saving it. He was fully unprepared to defend it. The watermelon slice slapped on the ground, accompanied by a fit of laughter. What was that for? Alright, cool. 
Seriously? There wasn't much left and you wanted another anyway. Really? Because I took at your logic, but there was only amusement in his eyes. I'll keep that one. It was pretty funny. The two of you were able to smile together again, and he did take that fourth piece. A little while later, Ko flinched, making a confused sound. He slowly put his current slice down on the plate next to him. You yeah, alright? Yeah. Making sure. Oh! He stood up, head tilted back to look at the sky. His feet took him to the middle of the street. Did you notice anything? What do you mean? I thought... I felt the rain drop. The sun's still out. You put down your water on slice and hopped off on your front- and hopped off your front step. Immediately, you felt a tap of water on the crown of your head, making you yelp. You're right! Cove was still staring up at the sky, and you watched as he began blinking more rapidly. When he finally turned in your direction, his face was bemused. It's a sun shower. It seemed crazy, but soon you couldn't avoid the drops that began increasing into a light shower. Moving with laughter, Cove kicked off his shoes uh, towards his front door and reveled in the moment. You were excited, he hid from the rain. You were annoyed with the sudden sprinkling. Excited! <laughs> you closed your eyes and threw your head back, letting the rain shower over you. The cold drops felt so right after the warmth of the day. Feeling energized, he ran over to Cove and laughed at how soaked he already was. Not that he cared, because he was really spinning into the middle of the street. Following his lead, he spun yourself until you were dizzy. Just as suddenly as the sprinkling started, it stopped and left you dripping with the smell of wet asphalt and soil tickling your nose. Oh, they have a sprite room. What? That's good. I like that. Go caught your eyes, running a hand through his wet hair. Combing it back, he frowned. Aww. It's over. The drops of rain clinging to his face almost could have been mistaken for tears. He sounded that disappointed. Well, it was fun. I wish it lasted longer. I've had enough rain for one summer day. You didn't have anything to say. Well, it was fun. Yeah, it's so cool that it happened. You then looked over at your door and sighed. You knew Ma wasn't going to be happy to see you trailing water into the house. Cove rubbed his arm awkwardly. He must have been thinking the same thing because he watched you sympathetically. Okay. You can drive off at my house if you want. My parents won't mind. Thanks, let's do that. You're the sweetest guy I know. I don't want to cause trouble. I'm fine. You're so sweet! I, uh, <laughs> thanks. It's not a big deal. It is. I could hear. I could already hear my mom's cries over my wet footsteps being all over the halls. Yeah, it would be bad to put a dampener on the day. <laughs> he chuckled at his little fun. Go <laughs> put you inside and you stay close to him. Cute. You have a ton of spare towels. I've just got to dig them out of the hall closet. Thank you for doing this. What should I do? I think I'm going to need to borrow some clothes for you, too. Thank you for doing this. No problem. It'll only be a second. Just hang out in the living room, but maybe don't sit on the couch. You answered him with a slight smile. Okay. With that, Cove disappeared and returned in no time, towels in hand. Here. Thanks. You accepted one and began to pat yourself down. A sudden call caught both of your attentions. I thought I heard voices. Cove's mom strolled into the living room with a curious grin. What happened here? You're both wet. There was a sudden shower. Badass. <laughs> Cove smiled back at his parent. He came inside to dry off. My mom don't want to be going to my house when I'm wet. Right. So I told them to come back here. That was very sweet of you, baby. She ruffled Cove's wet hair and laughed at the drops of water that shook off. Then a light came to Kyra's eyes. I have an idea. Why don't we go for a drive? It has to be standing around the house and you'll air dry in no time. Cove only offered a shrug and a bent smile to his mom. He looked at you for a real answer. Yeah, let's do it. You weren't sure at all about our suggestion. I don't know if my parents would want me to. Let's do it. Fun. This will be good. Kyra pulled out her cell phone from her pocket to call your moms. They'd swap numbers early in the summer. Head out, out to the garage. I'll meet you there in just a minute. Sorry. Sorry, my mom can be so pushy. She gets some idea in her head and that's what she does. That's okay. Thanks for letting me come. I didn't do anything. That wasn't true at all, but you let him get away with that. The writing is so cute. <laughs> Alright, 
Come on. Cove led you to the car, and Kyra wasn't too far behind. Okay, into the back, you two. Once the three of you were situated inside, Kyra started and drove out to the residential area. When she hit the main road, the car sped up, and she rolled the back windows down along the way. Down all the way. Cove started laughing as he kept trying in vain to keep his hair from flying into his eyes too much. Why do things seem louder? I'm gonna turn it down a little. Uh, Cove started laughing as he kept as he kept trying in vain to keep his eyes from flying into his eyes too much. Meanwhile, you closed your eyes as the wind whipped against your wet clothes. Come on. I said this drive was going to be good for getting air dry. Yes, but I didn't agree to this much air. Cove tried pressing the window button, but nothing happened. His eyebrows furrowed in frustration. You disabled the back? <laughs> Sorry, can't hear you. Smiling deviously, Kyra turned on the radio and turned it up to be heard over the wind. He laughed and enjoyed the event. He jokingly complained. You were not a fan of the stunt. You danced at your seat to the music. <laughs> you laughed and enjoyed it. He yelled into the wind and burst into laughter. Looking over at Cove, he saw him relax. He seemed glad that you were having fun. What's this? Oh, okay. And then something struck the side of your leg. Several papers were freed from under the car seats and were blown about. Uh, oh no, they can't go out the windows! <laughs> Cove began to haphazardly reach around the space to try and get it all back under wraps. Amused, he helped. He helped frantically. You watched him struggle, entertained. Amused, he helped. Mom, close the windows! Kyra offered no response other than a chuckle. She just kept driving. Co snatched several of the papers out of the air and you got others, preventing most of them from flying out the window on your side. You showed Cove your collection while grinning widely. <laughs> I think we got pretty much all of them. You figured if they were sitting out in the back of the car, they couldn't be important enough to get upset over, but Co continued to look annoyed. Your smile started to slip and, that, and at that his expression softened. I hope so. Thank you for helping. The sun set completely and at that Kyra rolled up the windows. Co let out a big sigh and released the random bits of paper he had in his fist. My mom is a bit crazy. Joanna hand through his windblown hair and laughed with a bit of exasperation. You felt good. You didn't know what was happening anymore. You were fed up. You felt good. The evening had already turned out to be more interesting than you expected. Grinning, you were happy with your odds with whatever else happened next. Cove watched you with interest until his focus was taken by a new compliment from his mom. But you're not feeling damp anymore. No, but now I feel tricked. <laughs> you sided with Cove, you sided with Kyra, you stayed quiet. Uh, Kyra, I'm... Uh, Cove, I'm not gonna let you turn this into a sad moment. I'm gonna side with Kyra. She did say she was taking us on a drive to air out, and that's what happened. Precisely, then. Kyra continued driving. The radio volume was adjusted for the closed windows, and everyone was sitting more comfortably. No. Does anyone know what we drove past during the drive cycle? I'm not sure I don't want to. A movie theater? Okay, most places have one somewhere. Not my town! <laughs> my town doesn't have one! It isn't that late, you know. We can probably still catch a show. Really, Mom? You don't even know what they what would be playing. That's what makes it fun. I want to see a movie. I'm not sure. No way, it's not fun. Heck yeah. Are my moms expecting me back soon? Huh. I have a feeling Kyra planned this, so I'll ask about my moms. You're gonna make their parents worried. Ah, oh, don't get me wrong, I'm not advocating impulsive behavior every day, but it's important to seize the moment when you can. You might we might never have another night like this. And don't worry, Nin, I said I'd watch out for you for the night, not just ten minutes or so. I'll put your parents in the loop about hitting the movies as soon as we get there. Ah, uh, I didn't bring any shoes. You should always bring shoes when you're going out. I'm not wearing any either, it doesn't matter. I'm not wearing any either, most likely. You lifted your foot up and wiggled your toes so Co could see. How are we gonna go inside barefoot? I don't know. We can't. Doesn't matter. I don't know. Sneak through quick. No one will notice. You can just. You can do it. Just as long. I don't want to touch movie 
theater ground and lay bare feet. You shared a look with Cove. It was comforting that at least you were on this wild ride together. Kyra dove into the theater parking lot and shut the, and shut the engine off. With the unbuckling of her seatbelt, she ushered you and Cove out. Despite being hesitant to leave, once outside, Cove burst into a sprint towards the cinema. You were right along with him. The tarmac was still wet from before and cold to stand on with bare feet. Side, you noticed that there were no lines. All the current shows had already started. Kyra paid that no mind and stared up towards the counter with some words of encouragement. A third of the running time is ads these days. We haven't missed anything. Meanwhile, Cove stood next to you awkwardly. He shifted from one foot to the other and constantly kept looking around. His shady behavior would have made him so much more likely to get caught than standing still would have if there were people around to really notice. It was pretty goofy. Still, you consult him. You kissed him over it. You complained with him. You kept quiet. Still, you consult him. You poked Cove's arm to get his attention. It'll be okay, Cove. His expression softened into an appeased smile. Yeah, thanks. Eliciting a sigh of relief out of you, Kyra returned with his tickets in hand. She quickly hurried you and Cove towards the showing room. I'm so sorry for the little hiccup, but hold on. You almost made it home free. Once you sit down, it'll be smooth sailing. The lights were already off in the showing room, but the movie hadn't started yet. The upcoming movie trailers were still playing. Uh -huh. Yes! Keeping her volume in a hushed tone, Kyra couldn't help but burst with excitement over your luck. You followed her down the walkway until she spotted open seats in the middle-ish area of the theater. Kyra pointed at the seats, looking over her shoulder at you and Cove, waiting for input. Cove nodded, and you decided to give her a thumbs up, and she led the way. Okay.
Oh man, she just can't be quiet, huh? I'm back, but my model isn't working. I'm trying to figure out how to get that to... Hmm. I don't know why my camera's having so much trouble tracking me all of a sudden. It's been getting worse and worse at it. up at the seats, looking over her shoulder at you and Cove, waiting for input. Cove nodded and he decided to give her a thumbs up and she led the way. When he reached your seats, Kyra sighed contentedly. Cove gave a sigh of his own and lifted, it, and lifted his feet to sit cross-legged instead of keeping them down on the floor. Yeah. He then leaned over and whispered to you, Do you have any idea what the movie is? No, I didn't hear the name or anything when your mom brought the tickets. Oh boy. After a couple more previews, the main event began. It dawned on you that you quickly realized that it was a horror film. I had a group of students being haunted by dangerous ghosts. Corpse party? You were psyched. You could live with it. That was going to be annoying. You became nervous, terrified. You couldn't do this. You had to leave. Sight. Going in, you weren't sure what to expect, but this was a fantastic surprise. You hoped this turned out to be good and scary. I figured. Glancing over it. Cove, you notice that he looked less than thrilled with the movie. He bit down at his bottom lip and stared at the screen with trembling eyes. Oh, maybe. Cove had never been a fan of ghosts or intentionally frightened things. Frightening things. This was something you learned about him early on. <laughs> oh, my heater turned on. Uh, I'm the exact opposite. I really like ghosts and stuff. You mean still? You tapped him on the shoulder to get his attention. You angled your body in your seat to get closer to him. You grabbed hold of his hand to cover your ears. I don't want to scare him, so I'll tap him on the shoulder. You give him a light pat and you don't- Yeah, see, that still scared him. And you don't slightly at the unexpected touch. Club looked at you, unsure. You offered him your hand. Are you okay? Hand? He took it immediately. <laughs> His fingers held firmly to yours, and he was able to face the screen again with a lighter expression. Sometimes the other people in the movie theater screamed or jeered or clapped depending on what was happening. Your heart was pounding in your chest when the movie family came to an end. The main character resolved the hauntings, but in a dark conclusion, they didn't make it out alive. You stayed to let the credits roll and for the theater to clear out, then it was time to head back to the car. Both you and Cove took the same seats in the back of the car again. Even though it was late, Tyra was exuding an upbeat, cheerful energy. What a great flick. Yeah. It wasn't so bad at the end. You enjoyed it, baby? No, I mean, it's hard to explain. I got really tense, and I guess that's the point of horror stuff, but I kind of don't want to have to feel like that. Now that it's all over, though, it was sort of cool to do. That's so great. Min, how are you feeling? It was awesome. Terrible, but that made it fun. It was bad. It was alright. You shocked. Awesome. Kyra smiled at that. I still can't believe that they died. It's nice when things aren't all that obvious that you don't really know how to, until you see it, but I wanted it to go better. I demand a happier ending. I loved it all, how it all fell apart when it seemed like things were going to be okay. I saw it coming. You nodded along with what Cope was saying. It was so lame. I loved how it all fell apart when it seemed like things were going to be okay. I thought it fit what they were going for. That's true. You and Cope spent the rest of the car ride absorbed in conversation about the movie. So, who's hungry? You were surprised when you realized Co Kyrie didn't drive you home, but to a drive through burger restaurant instead. Um. um. I'm not hungry. Shake your head. No. Yeah. You nodded. Why not? Why not? <laughs> That's the spirit. Get whatever you want. <clears throat> ah, 
they did it again. They removed all the hard meat options. Um, mozzarella sticks. French fries. Soda. That's everything. Is that all right? Of course. A okay. Cairo pulled up to the window and ordered what you asked for first. She then decided to order one of everything on the value menu. <laughs> Whoa, what are you going to do with all that? Eat it. Really? The whole menu? That's right. <laughs> there may be only ten things on it. There are only maybe ten things on it, and they're about to be a dollar. And ugh, and they're about a dollar each. I can swing it. Besides, whatever we don't finish, I'm going to feed to your dad. He'll be in heaven. Co sighed affectionately at his mother's antics. Thank you. You're welcome. You're quite welcome. A few minutes later, Kyra exchanged her number for multiple bags of... Her number... Her money from multiple bags of food, which she quickly tossed to you both in the back seats. She then drove off into the night. Can you pass me something? What should I grab? Surprise me. You chose one of the wrapped sandwiches and handed it to her. You had no idea if it was a burger or something else. Thanks very much. Accepting that this is what was happening, Cove shrugged and started putting food, pulling food out of the bags for himself. Cove ended up with some onion rings and he happily munched on them. You selected something randomly, you made sure to grab something you liked. So you're grabbing one of everything, and my character is pretty much a vegetarian, so I'll grab something I like. You weren't even questioning Kyra's crazy ride anymore. The adventure continued, and you were so preoccupied in the back that you almost didn't realize the car had stopped. Kyra turned to look over her shoulder. Okay, party people. Soon we've reached the end of the road. Confused, you checked out the window and saw nothing except empty roads ahead. And then you noticed the now leaving sign. Kyra took you through the entire town. What are we doing here? Kyra turned the car around and parked it along the side of the road. I think you both could use a break to stretch your legs, and I doubt anyone's going to come through here at this time of night. Besides, I need to make a call, so go on. Cove shook his head and got out of the car without a fight. Stay in the car. Follow Cove. Follow Cove. He got out and caught up to Cove. He was busy looking at the stars and stretching his arms while he strolled around. He thought being there was exciting. I think he was pretty cool in your mind. You didn't care much overall, you felt worried, you were mad, you just felt tired. Pretty cool in my mind. This is a good place to stop. If she was going to take us all around town, at least it wasn't done halfway. Ko smiled, glancing from the stars to you. Shortly after, you noticed Ko's expression changed. His eyebrows furrowed, and it seemed he was thinking hard about what he wanted to say next. Nin, I'm really sorry about my, for my mom being crazy tonight. She isn't always like this, seriously. Why is she being like this now? I think she feels like she has to get out there and do things with me all she can, and she has to make the time memorable. This visit has been really different than the others, and it didn't start off good. Thinking about how, how Kyra's trip began this summer, you could understand why Cole was thinking along those lines. She probably wanted all the trouble to be worth it in the end. <laughs> Are you having a good time with your mom around? Okay, I get it. She didn't have made me be a part of it. You nod an understanding. She's giving you a taste of your own medicine. She said nothing. Are you having a good time with your mom around? Yeah, it's still weird having her and dad in the same house, but I love her. She's my mom. I like hanging around with her most of the time. It was silent between you two, so you jumped when you heard the sound of a car door closing. Go, come in. You turned to see Kyra by the driver's side, waving. The sight brought a smile to Cope's face, and she quickly made her way over to where you both were standing. Thanks for waiting. I didn't mind. My baby. How did I end up with such a polite boy? She ruffled his hair, and Cope lowered his head, accepting the compliment. He thought about how interesting it was to see Cope, how Cope interacted with his mom. And then the memory hit you. That first summer, you and Cope came to this very spot in his runaway attempt to find his way back to his mom. And now you are all here, together. You kept that thought to yourself. You whispered about it to Cove. You said it out loud. Whispered about it to Cove. Taking a step closer to Cove, you leaned in close to share the moment just with him. Isn't it strange that your mom took us here? This is where you went to try seeing her when you moved to Sunset Bird. Cove flinched and his eyes darted over to his mom, worried that she'd heard. When he was satisfied she didn't, he turned back. Yeah, it's weird, but she doesn't know that happened. At least I'm pretty sure she doesn't. Really? 
dad likes to tell her things are fine so she doesn't worry. You decided to inform Kyra. You nodded and kept the secret. Cub looked at you gratefully and you shared a conspiratorial smile. <laughs> Anyways, it's kind of cool to be here, right on the edge of town. Exactly, we're standing on a precipice. I think so. I don't really see what's so different about it. Oh, uh, you didn't have a strong opinion. I think so too. I knew you'd get it. It's good to appreciate these times and places. Kyra let out a big breath of air. We should probably call it a night, huh? <sighs> Dang it, Kyra. Mm. Yeah, let's go. Finally. You nodded. You felt disappointed it was actually over. Disappointed. You kind of hoped some other unexpected thing would pop up to keep things going. Kyra smiled shyly and gestured to the car. Quietly, you all made your way back, back to it. Cove naturally followed you, taking the seat nearby in the back with a collection of fast food bags still strewn about. You rested your head in the seat as the car roared to life. As you did, Cove leaned in close to whisper. Hey. I can talk to your mom if they did get mad about tonight for some reason. It was mom's, my mom's idea. You didn't have any choice. Thank you. Thanks, I might need it. I'm just glad we're heading back now. This is worth it, even if they get mad. You nodded. This is worth it. Your mouth pulled into the biggest grin, getting a laugh out of Cove. If you say so. Cove smiled bashfully at you, but said nothing else. The drive home was smooth and uneventful. The radio was off completely, and you felt your eyes getting heavy. Your head rested on the side of the car. Your head came to rest on Cove. Very good. We tired. <sighs> sure, let's go for it. You were too tired to keep your head up and felt quite comfortable there. Cove didn't have any issues. He leaned into it. You must have been exhausted, too. You were happy to stay close like that. It was warm and comfortable. When you opened your eyes, you expected to still be in the car, not your bedroom. It was somehow already morning. You couldn't remember how you ended up there. Sitting up in bed, you thought about how last night was quite an experience. It almost felt like a dream more than a real event, but it definitely happened. And you were glad you had to have a spontaneous escapade this summer. Alright, the last one for today will be soiree. We've been going for an hour already, but I kind of don't want it to end. Maybe... Maybe I will do the intro to step three as well, and I'll just cut it out and make it its own video on YouTube later. Ah, that might be necessary. But I've been having... I just like sitting here and reading, and it's been the first time in a while that I felt good enough to keep going for more than two. Though. I guess I'm still tired despite how good I feel to be doing this. Yeah, I mean, these ones have also been shorter. I can't believe it only took me an hour to get through them both. <clears throat> oh, soiree. You'd whiled away the morning doing whatever struck your fancy, and now you're recharging with lunch. With nothing on the horizon, you're free to spend as much or as little time on your plate as you want to. It was while you were thinking on all the possibilities for your afternoon that your mom's approached you. Mm. I almost choked myself. Jesus. Hi. Hi, Nin. You okay? Mouthful, you nodded in reply. To your surprise, they both sat yet with you at the table. Based on the time, you'd wondered if they were joining you for a meal, but neither of them brought anything. Great, we'd like to have a little chat with you. Qualifier little did nothing to downplay the situation. You chewing slid as your eyes widened, looking from one parent to the other. Anything that required both of them to anything that required both of them to talk to you must be something big. Um, it was unsettling. You perked up. You're mindful of exciting possibilities. Irritated at the interruption, you groaned. It was unsettling. You didn't like being the only one not knowing what was going on. Stomach churning, you waited for them to fill you in. <clears throat> Aw, don't look so worried. It's nothing scary. Promise. It's a soiree at the Cypress tomorrow night. Your ma and I are going. 
The Cypress was a country club your moms were part of and where Elizabeth played soul. It seemed like every other month they had some event or another, all with fancy names like soiree. Chewing your love, you wondered what this had to do with you. Mom chuckled at your poorly concealed reaction. Leaning in, Ma took your hand and squeezed it. We decided to make the night a bit special. Elizabeth was going to be allowed to stay home fully alone for the first time. Sorry. You'll still be coming to the party with us. It's Elizabeth's night to party with no family around, not yours. Sorry, you've got to wait a couple more years. That's not fair. You were disappointed by the news. Alright, I can go. What's it going to be like? Uh, I don't really like stuff like this, though. going to be like? The usual. Well, mostly. We wanted to make it a special night for you, too. So we got a little, something a little extra planned. <clears throat> that was unexpected. Interested. You listened. Your parents shared a look across the table. You cleared your throat, reminding them that you were waiting. They couldn't keep dropping such hints and then turned coy when the conversation was about to get good. Since it's a pretty fancy party, that's still chaperoned and attendees are allowed to bring a guest, we thought it might be a nice opportunity for you to invite someone yourself, as a date if you want. Your eyes widened as the words sunk in. Your mom's continued and it was a struggle to keep up. <clears throat> Even though we'll be at the party too, you don't need to worry about us getting in your way. You'll be free to eat, dance, and enjoy the music as you see fit. But no leaving the property. <clears throat> I'm, okay, my voice has been broken by the... <laughs> uh... uh. All right. Hmm. Come on. My neck is being weird. <sighs> <clears throat> Ma nodded at Mom's introduction. Sorry for the yawn. Z yawns. Yes, as long as you don't leave the party, and if you'd rather bring just a friend, that's okay too. It's amazing how disappointing you didn't even know how to react. You didn't know how to react. Your parents were still smiling at you, clearly expecting a response, but you were still too shocked to formulate anything of the kind. You hadn't imagined this is where the talk was going. Don't worry about it. The soiree isn't until tomorrow, so you've got time. Just let us know your plans before we're heading out. That's all. We'll leave you to your lunch now. Well, that's just something that... That's a little... That's pretty crazy to just drop on a 13-year-old kid. <laughs> a date? What did they expect me to- <laughs> Okay. Your mom drove from the chairs in unison, disappearing to another part of the house. You barely noticed their departure. All you could think about was what just happened. Remnants of your lunch stared up at you from your plate. <clears throat> you felt you should finish eating. You'd lost your appetite. You were glad to get back to eating. You felt you should finish eating. The conversation had taken your mind off the meal, but you opted to try to eat a little more. You picked up the plate for a little while longer. Even though you'd relocated to your bedroom, your head was still stuck on the conversation that had unfolded at the dining table downstairs. You knew that having someone come as a friend would be best. You wanted it to be a date. You didn't want to bring anyone. It was too soon to pick one way or another. Oops. Um... I really need to clean off my desk. Yeah, it looks like that's what I'll be doing after the stream, cleaning my room. Uh Oops. Da 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 da. -da. There we go. <clears throat> Sure, let's make it a date. Let's push headlong into this. Especially, like, as a 13-year-old, I was rushing to grow up. The prospect of having your first date made it impossible to sit still. You couldn't help but jiggle your foot as you laid on your bed, contemplating the possibility. The night being a date would actually mean would mean actually asking someone out. The little you knew that of that came from what you'd seen on TV and movies, and what you'd heard about from kids at school. The little do we know we ask people out all the time. We ask Cove out all the time. You almost hadn't even entertained the date of you date the idea of you dating until now. 
You interpret possible words and phrases in your head, setting up scenarios and smooth segues before tearing them down and trying something else. Sighing, you shifted position on the bed, resting your arms on the windowsill. A flock of birds caught your eye and led your gaze as they crossed the sky. You watched the birds grow smaller and less distinct until they disappeared from sight. Like the snap of a hypnotist's fingers, you were released from the trance and left with a goal of your own. You were going to go take a walk. You ambled through the familiar streets of your neighborhood, picking your path at whim. It was as quiet as ever, with tourists choosing to congregate in the shopping area near the beach rather than venture into the sleepy, sleepy residential zones. You continued down the road and soon found yourself at the shore. The fresh, salty air hit you first, rolling to meet you over the grassy dunes that tickled your legs, followed by the familiar view of the sea stretching out across the horizon. You came to a halt. A lone figure was standing in the ocean, the water reaching out to his knees. Though he asked back to you, you recognize the familiar silhouette and green hair as Coves. A nascent that you find him here. He was always in his element by the sea. You had no idea if he heard your arrival or if it was a coincidence, but he looked over his shoulder. Your eyes met. You smiled, waved him over, called out, headed closer. Um. Smiled. The expression came as naturally as the rising tide. Seeing Cove was an easy way to lift one's mood. I agree. Co grinned at you from over his shoulder before turning around to wade back to the shore. Nin, what are you up to? My moms are taking me to a soiree tomorrow at their country club. Soiree? Sounds exciting. Cove tried to show a level of enthusiasm, keeping his grin pinned in place, but you could tell he had no envy towards your plans. You coming too? Will you come with me? You don't have to come if you don't want to. I'm attending my myself. I don't know if I necessarily want to tell him what to do. So. I mean, as cute as that would be. Uh, this is a serious thing. This is my character's first time really consciously asking someone out on a date, even though we've asked Cove on dates before. Or not dates, I guess, but like we asked about one on one before. Um, we're always going, we're always doing this kind of stuff for him as well. So I think is that about fairness? I would do it regardless. Going with him to things he didn't want to go to, but I think that it sets a precedent that he'll probably come for me. Cause I mean, come on. Also, I keep doing this. Drinking and then messing up my camera. Come on now. Hmm. Uh, You'd think that at least my voice would trigger it. There we go. Will you come with me? No, oh, um, can you bring someone? My mom said it was okay for someone to come along. You watched him process the offer, his eyes becoming far away for just a moment before he broke right. into a smile. Sure, I'll come. I know that's a big deal for you. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that's great. Thanks. You read a sigh of relief. Give me a date. I don't want to make it awkward. Thanks. Thanks for inviting me. You clapped your hands together, ready to share the resolution with your parents. Can you come to my house right now so we can let my mom throw the plan? No problem. Cove went to where he discarded his things in the sand, tucking a shirt over his head and slipping on a pair of shoes before joining you and setting off home. The two of you stepped inside the front door of your house. Given the proximity you'd had growing up, it was an action you'd taken together countless times, and you let yourself lucky to have such a great friend living close by. At the sound of the door opening, your mom poked her head into the hall. Hello. Ah, oh, Cove, it's you. What a surprise. She chuckled at her own joke. Cove was always there, and she knew how close the two of you were. Bringing anyone other than him would have been an actual surprise. Hi, Miss Odeon. Nice to see you. So I take it Cove's going to be our guest for tomorrow night. Yep. So. And is it a date? Her voice was light, teasing, and it was painful. No, we're just going to hang out at the party together. <laughs> okay, Cove, I'll give your folks a call and get everything squared away. She went off to fetch the phone. You shook your head, betrayed. How could she say something like that with no warning? 
Co gave you a crooked smile, a weak imitation of the usual one. You weren't the only one caught off guard by your comment. And the rest of the afternoon passed by just like that. Back in your room, your mind was abuzz with visions of tomorrow night. The soiree was an exciting prospect now that you'd gotten to experience it with Co. You just hoped that he'd have a good time when all was said and done. The evening of the soiree had arrived and the daylight hours had slipped away in a blur. Up in your bedroom, you were getting ready for the big event. This was your intention, at least, so you hadn't settled on an outfit. Stationed in front of your wardrobe, you scanned over the clothing you had at your disposal. The Ma had mentioned this event was a bit dressier than a normal get-together. You didn't necessarily have to comply. You looked for something formal. You wanted to keep things casual. Ah, uh, formal. You tended to decide between the nicer pieces in your wardrobe, the ones that really had a chance to come out. You decided to dress formally because... You felt like you had to. You honestly liked dressing up. You were dressing to impress. You had to put the things you owned to use. You wanted to make Ma happy. Mm. You honestly liked it. There was, something magical about, there was something magical about the sheen of an elegant fabric and the cut of formal wear. Something that transformed everyone into a more sophisticated version of their normal self. To start, you decided to wear... Dress, blouse, button-down shirt. Button-down shirt. Crisp shirts were a classic formal look for a reason. They were essentially foolproof. You paired your top with a skirt. The breeziness would be a perfect fit for the summer evening soiree. You began to get dressed, your fingers working stiff zips and awkward fastenings. It felt different against your skin, reminding you with every movement that you were dressing up. Whatever happened tonight, you were pleased that you'd gotten the opportunity to wear this. Skirts might be seen as reserved as for girls by some people, but that wasn't a concept you brought into. If you wanted to wear one tonight, then you would. Now dressed, you gave yourself a final glance over before heading downstairs, ready to head out. You found your mom's already waiting in the living room. They were putting the finishing touches on their outfits, Moss dropping her heels into a stiletto shoe and Mom trying to fasten her bracelet single-handed. Oh, your outfits are so pretty! Oh wait, oops. Aww. They looked up as you entered. Oh. Aw, Nin, you look so nice. I'm doing so, fam. Thanks. Thanks for dressing up, Nin. I hope the party will be prepared for your arrival. You look sharp. Mom was still struggling with the bracelet. You lent a hand, literally, by taking one side and holding it as she, secured, as she secured the clasp. Secured. Mom then glanced over at the clock on the wall. Seeing where the hands were pointing, a frown creased her, her face. When's Cope going to be here? Do you know? He's getting here at 7. Soon, probably. I'm not sure. I'm picking him up. I'll go get him. I'll go get him. Oh. Oh, yeah? She raised her eyebrows, a broad grin replacing the earlier frown. That's very polite of you. Get going. We want to leave in ten minutes. Okay. Coast house was mere seconds away from your own, making the morning unnecessary, but you dutifully went out. After crossing the street, you find yourself at Coast's very familiar front door. You ring the bell whose chime was lodged in your head from all the times you'd rung it over the years. Now, unlike usual, Ko's mom, Cairo, was the one who answered it this night. Oh. Hey, Nin. Come on in. She beckoned you inside as if she was so excited to see you that words alone weren't enough. Thanks for coming. The boys will be right down. They're just in Ko's room. I can call them if you want. That'd be great. Thanks. It's alright. I can wait. Can I go check? You went over to Ko's room to check yourself. It's alright. I can wait. Right. Sure. She took a seat on the sofa and patted a chair. Feel free to put your feet up. While you waited, Kyrie easily filled the time by chatting with you about your plans for the night ahead. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I was thinking about saving and going back to see what would happen if I went to check, but no, I don't. That seems like it could be bad. <laughs> a short while later, Mr. Holden strolled into the room, giving you a wave. Ko pulled his face into a smile. As he reciprocated, the tension in his face faded away. I like, I like his outfit. Cove looks good in black. Hi, Nin. Hi. Cove seemed to take your appearance with a glance. Put your appearance in with a glance. He smiled. He opened his mouth to speak more, then paused. Cove checked the time using a clock hanging on the side wall and addressed his parents. We've got to go. He abruptly headed toward the door, his parents wiping you off. Bring him back in one piece. Have a blast, you two. Bye. He ducked out, following Cove into the street. Once out in the fresh evening, evening air, Cope breathed deeply before smiling at you. 
I've never been to something like this. I don't know what to expect, but I want to find out. You're glad that he was in a good mood. A little intrigue about the night ahead was a good sign. Don't expect a red carpet. It's not that big of a deal. You returned home, Cove and Till. Your mom's welcomed you back before whisking you out right out once more to get in the car. You pulled up at the country club. Oh, oh I've heard that. I'm so sorry. The sun had sunk deep into the horizon, the last of its light sleepily warming the oncoming night. Your mom led the way into the space around the back where the event was being held. The place had been transformed to decoration with smart tablecloths and elegant ribbons contributing to a festive atmosphere. Musicians dressed in matching black and white were setting up their instruments and flicking their pages of sheet music, and as promised, there was a table covered in plates of carefully prepared food. Destination reached, your parents rounded on you and Cove. Things haven't kicked off yet, but don't let that stop you from enjoying yourselves. Have fun. We'll be around if you need us. See you later. See ya. Bye. Cove waved your mom's off. Once they retreated a distance away, you found him watching you expectantly. What now? His voice was light, but from his wide eyes and their nervous glances, you could tell he was feeling out of his depth. We'll have to wait for some things to start, like the band, but there's stuff going on already. Cove perked up at that. Really? Oh, do you want to do any of those? Whatever they are. Introduce Cove to people in your club. You took a seat to relax. You checked the snacks at the refreshment table. Uh, I don't want to go shoving his face into other people's faces, so let's take a seat real quick. Real quick, we'll take a seat. Yeah. Uh, we should pick out a table. Okay. You found a place to sit at the end of the party area where it was quieter with two people bustling around. You pulled out a chair and sat down. Cove was already Cove already seated with stretching. These clothes are kind of uncomfortable. He flexed an arm at the elbow, frowning before twisting it back behind him. Yeah? My arms can't move the same as normal, like I'm gonna rip it if I do anything. I don't mind. It, yeah, it's the worst. I think it suits you. I mean, he does look good in it, so I think it suits you. Really? Oh, okay, thanks. He toyed a long cuff of his shirt, wedging a finger between the fabric and his skin. Now that you had a spot of your own, you stayed chatting about the table, and you moved on to something else. Stay chatting for a little bit. In no time at all, the sun set in full. The lights faded in, and the opening notes of the band's first song rang out. You and Cove stopped what you were doing, turning to contemplate the party that had been steadily unfurling while you were distracted. It was much busier now, both in terms of people and activity. The first steps were taken onto the dance floor, some tentative, others eager, and even if the band hadn't been playing, the constant level of chatter would have ensured that it wasn't a quiet night. With the party now in full swing, your options had increased. Waiting to see what your models were up to, you watched the band perform, you asked Cope to dance, you looked for someone at the party to dance with. Cope doesn't seem like he liked dancing. I'm gonna save and ask him anyway. Cause that's how you do things like this. So, would you like to dance, maybe? Hey, Kel, let's dance. Can I have the pleasure of your company on the dance floor? It's time to dance. I'd like to dance with you. I'd like to dance with you, if that's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'd say. Cole raised his eyebrows in surprise at your hesitant invitation. Even though it was a dance party, he had anticipated this outcome. Man, I don't think I can. He looked out onto the dance floor, discomfort radiating off of him. Your heart sank. You counted Cove as a good friend. He thought he would feel okay if it was with you. I don't know how to dance. It's crowded out there. Following his gaze, he saw the dance floor it was now tightly packed with swaying, affectionate couples. He rubbed his arm, shoulders hunched inwardly. That's fine. Sorry. We wouldn't be able to change his mind. There was nothing you could do but accept it. You understood. It was annoying. You tried to lighten the mood. You had nothing you could say. You understood. You didn't want to force Cove into anything that would distress him. Smiling gently, you let him know that you got where he was coming from. Hmm. Alright. I'm gonna... I don't mind this outcome, but I would like to try something else really quick. It's 
if you guys will be so kind as to let me. Now let's watch. Yinko found a spot to the side of the simple stage that had been set up for the soiree. Terry, you were checked out of the way of the dance floor while still enjoying an excellent view of the band. You've gotten there in time to watch them from the start of the song. Their expression solemn as they tease notes from the strings of their instruments. Cove was in chance, nodding his head along with the music. Catching you watching him, he smiled sheepishly. Okay. It's cool. You enjoyed the performance too. The music was okay, it wasn't impressive. You enjoyed it too. Yeah, this is great. Hmm. I do think I prefer this outcome. You'll have to play that well someday. These are professionals. Their skills honed over the years. It was natural that you would be performing at that standard at your age without significant dedication, time, commitment, and talent, but you still had dreamed of reaching that level. It makes me feel like I should practice more. Why? He was looking at you full on, his attention back on you. You made the comment idly, not expecting a response, and you felt a little bashful about explaining. You're so good. It would be nice to be able to play like that. Cove nodded, understanding. I think you can do it. And if it matters, I like your playing the way it is already. The band, be the band began to play their next song. Cove was enraptured once more, his head tilted curiously as he watched the musicians wield their instruments. Wield, huh? Hmm. Come on. During a particularly beautiful solo, he even closed his eyes, focusing on nothing but the music. But after a couple of songs, it was decided that you would watch the band enough. You went to see what your moms were up to. You asked him to dance. You looked for someone at the party to dance with. You looked for Cove. You looked to Cove. You looked to Cove, I guess. Um, I'm surprised that this option came up again. But this time I'm not going to ask. I'll just... You focused over Cove, wondering how he was finding the evening. He sighed. It was so quiet and unobtrusive that you wouldn't have caught if you hadn't been watching him. His gaze was roaming. With how far away his eyes seemed, whatever he was searching for, could, he couldn't be found at this party. He turned to face you before you could say anything. I want to sit down. We were already sitting. We can do that. Cove began to move and you instinctively followed him. Yet instead of taking a seat at one of the many free tables as you expected, Cove ignored them as he purposely strode out of the party area. Where are you going? Your call didn't seem to register with him as he continued forward and onto the greens of the golf course. He went after him, trying to watch out for the uneven ground underfoot. The claws of earth dislodging in games of golf were perfect for snatching unwary feet even in daylight. Up ahead, Cove didn't appear to have any difficulty traversing the uneven land. So this is odd. Aww. This is cute. Co uh, he settled down on one of the little hills of the golf course. He joined him, still unsure about what was going on. Are you alright? Why are we here? What's wrong? Why'd you drag us out here? Look at us, breaking the rules. You didn't say anything. He'll tell me. Closing his eyes, Cove breathed a sigh of relief. When he opened them again, he smiled sheepishly at you. I'm sorry. You can go back to the party. You didn't budge from your spot. From here, the party was just a glowing haze in the distance. You didn't want to leave him behind. You were glad to take a break. Didn't? No, no glad to take a break. I'm happy to be here. I want to rest a little. Cove nodded, recognizing your shared feeling. Now that Cove was more at ease, he tried to find out what had caused him to take flight in the first place. Did the party make you uncomfortable? It upset you that Cove had been unhappy attending an event with you, but logically you knew that the issue was likely the event rather than your company. Yeah, he doesn't really seem like the type for things like this. So it is worrisome that... It, like, it would make me worry, to be honest, whether or not he was enjoying himself. He doesn't really seem... He's a lot more like... me. <laughs> No. He shook his head emphatically. 
It's not anything I did tonight. It's definitely not anything you did either. You nodded relieved to have your suspicions confirmed. Could it be the noise, the atmosphere, the clothes? Clothes attended to fill in the gaps of understanding. I don't want to think about going back to the party. I just feel ready to go home. To your own planet? Don't try running that far. He kept quiet. You sure you're not having fun anymore? Should I get my bombs? No, I'm sure you're not. I'm sorry you're not having fun anymore. Or should I get my bombs? Um. Looks upset. <laughs> ah, the alien he really wants to say to your home planet. Um. <laughs> I don't know if it's okay to joke with him. He seems to be feeling bad. Should I get my bombs? I don't want to ruin their night. Co sat there quietly, gazing out into the shadowy hills and valleys of the golf course. A comfortably warm wind, wind rustled between you two, tousling his hair. It was so far away from the hubbub of the party, you could even make out the quiet sound of crickets mm -hmm. chirping. This is kind of like how we first met. Do you remember? I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> yeah, of course I do. How could I forget? No. Of course I do. Your impression of Ko during those early days hadn't been fond. It's so weird. That was a long time ago now. You thought back to the day when Ko first arrived in the neighborhood. He'd run away from Mr. Holden, taking solace in the hills behind your house. That had been late, too, on a clear night like today. Looking at the sky, you wondered if the stars were looking down on no, you. We're looking down. Eh. You wondered if the stars that were looking down were the same ones as then. Cove's face was brighter, though you could still see signs of the strain that had caused him to depart from the soiree. When he'd first sat down, he had curled up like a pill bug, hunched over, knees pressed to his chest, and arms wrapped around them. He then wound as he'd been talking, straightening up, his hands free to gesticulate. It was as though the two of you had constructed your own little world away from everything else, and he was beginning to perk up. The small smile that crept into his face was quickly ushered away by a frown. This is a lot like a date. Oops! Co followed up on the statement before you could react. He spoke in a distinctly whispered tone, as though you were the only ones in the world that he could share these words with. After I said I wanted to come, I wanted to take it back. Not because I really didn't want to do it, but because, I don't know. It seemed like a big deal. It made me feel bad somehow. I started feeling like I couldn't do it, even though I just wanted to do it. I guess it was sort of like having to give a presentation in front of the class, even though it was just me and you doing something like we always do. He charged on, his words streaming out. I still could do it because thinking about not being here, there and you and what you might think if I did take it back made me feel way worse than whatever else I felt. I'm sorry, Nim. I'm sorry. I just can't. I can't just deal with stuff like this and have to make everything so complicated. That's fine. You don't need to apologize. You hung your head. I'm sorry. It made you feel bad. I don't want to be here. I don't want you to be here if you don't want to be here. You smiled at him. You didn't have to come. You could have told me. If apologizing for this makes you feel better, then I will let you apologize. But I don't think you did anything wrong. You smiled at him. You then took his hand, he placed his hand on his shoulder, he then leaned against him, you ruffled his hair, you hoped he'd feel better. You then placed the hand on his shoulder. As he squeezed it, a smile flickered back on Nicole's face. He finally moved his head to look you straight on, eyes meeting yours. <sighs> Thanks for inviting me, Nin. You stared back at him, not comprehending. But didn't it make you feel bad? Yeah. Yeah, it did, when I had to think about how I was actually doing it. But getting to hear that you wanted me to go really made me feel good. Nice. I'm happy when you think about me when when you want me to be there. When I just do it and you're with me, it all feels better in the end. <laughs> Co stood up without warning. The sun changed to a quiet reverie that had fallen over you. It was such a cope thing to do. You got up to stand beside him. What was that? Hey, give me a little warning next time. What's up? Lift your head and unspoken question. Wait, hold on. <clears throat> he tilted your head and unspoken question. Co smiled awkwardly, brushing some grass off the side of his pants. You wanna dance with me? Absolutely! <laughs> that was adorable! Oh my goodness.
Oh, protect this boy. What? Why? I thought you didn't like dancing. Ah, I got so excited. But I messed up. Oops. Alright, yeah, uh, what? Why? Uh, it's a dance party, right? And I think... He trailed off. Ralph where was. He was trying to figure out the answer himself. Nodding slowly, he continued. I think I want to dance with you before it's over. With the only words he had to explain gone, he just held up his hand to you. His expression was soft. I want to dance with you too. No thanks. Not quietly. Shake your head. No thanks? <laughs> I want to dance with you too. And he reached his hand and took it in yours. You turn hand in hand. With the party reaching the end of a long evening, Dan's and couple could become scarce. One pair among many were hard to notice, but now the space around you would act as a spotlight, not that there were many left to watch you. He was still at ease, even buoyed by the dissipated crowd. There was a spring in his stuff as you walked onto the dance floor together. Cole kept hold of the hand you'd given him back on the little hill. He rested the other on your shoulder. He hesitated while you waited for a sign. With the song in progress before you stepped out to dance, there was no signal for the right moment to begin. The same thought occurred to Ko, who shrugged his shoulders so was keeping form. Taking that as your starting point, you cautiously began to sway. Ko readily followed your example. You danced wordlessly, dimly aware of the music guiding you. You were more focused on Ko, whose attention was firmly fastened on you. He didn't look down or away once, not even when your knees knocked against each other and you both briefly fumbled your step. Instead, he smirked. He wanted to take this dance in stride in more ways than one. You were utterly at peace, safe and relaxed in his presence. The little slip up the whole evening, really, only served to underline how nothing could deny the foundation of your friendship. <laughs> a little too soon, the song reached its conclusion. You could have continued quite contented for some time. You and Cove let go of each other, though your feet remained rooted to where they'd been when the song finished. You heard your name called out, and that brought the dance truly to an end. You both spun to find Mom yelling for you and Cove. Beside her, Ma was shaking her head. It's time to go home, Lonnie. I had to get hold of them somehow. What do you want me to do, sneak up on them? Her chosen method was admittedly better than that. You still cringed at how unaware you'd been when they announced their arrival. Cove looked so. Oh my goodness. That was hard. Hmm. Cove looked so embarrassed to be caught that you worried about him making another dash away from the party. Despite Cove's reaction to the scene with your mom's, to you it had been a perfect ending to the evening. You were so glad you got a chance to dance with Cove once more before the night was over. And it definitely was over now. You didn't have to say anything to Cove. The two of you marched wordlessly over to your parents, who were still bickering playfully. Standing shoulder to shoulder, your parents survived you and survived. Standing shoulder to shoulder, your parents survived you and Co. You wondered if they were checking that they were returning Mr. Holden's son at the same state that he left his house. That was quite a night, huh, gang? Wasn't it, Jess? Co managed a self-conscious smile. <laughs> yeah. Ma was smiling too, with an expression so soft that it could have cradled the newborn chick. Good. Well, we better start... Wait, no, we better ready ourselves to get back to Elizabeth. If we're lucky, the house might still be standing. Damn. Gosh, what is with me today? My mouth just won't say the words. Goodness gracious. Shush. She swatted your mom playfully, laughing at the comment. You cast one last look at the party. You saw people exchanging farewells and suppressing yawns. Most of the faces were happy ones, despite the wariness that was starting to creep in. Ko's head was angled away from you. As you watched, wondering what he was looking at, he came around and met your gaze. 
It was strange. Though it had only been a few hours of your life, you felt a little older as a result of attending the party. It was like a step away from the world of your childhood, where dressing up was reserved almost exclusively as a form of play, towards something new that you hadn't yet grasped. Turning away from the final moments of the party, you shelved that thought for another time as your mom eagerly led the way back to the car. As you and Cove tailed after them, you felt childlike once more. And that's soiree! Alright, um... I still feel as though I could keep going for a little bit longer, but I doubt we'll be getting into the next phase. I want to at least look at... Alright, don't move on yet. Let's save. We'll just save over that last scenario. I don't think I'll be doing that again. And, uh, and then summer ended. Yeah. There is no denying it. Today was the very last day of summer. Today, you were heading to class. You're excited. Anxiety nod at you. It was a bummer. Your feelings were muddled. Anxiety nod at your stomach. Going back to school meant handing over the autonomy you had over the past weeks. You had very little control over what you did at school or who you shared a class with. It was with a heavy heart that you chose your outfit for your final day of freedom. Life was going to be different. You'd come to think of the summer vacation as the norm, but school sucked up the majority of the year, whereas the summer vacation was just a respite in the middle. So rather than it being different, it was kind of a return to the normal? What did your normal life really mean? You considered how fondly your moms talked about their summer vacations as kids. You dimly recognized that one year the pattern of school and summer itself would be over for good. It was hard to imagine. You got distracted, one arm still out of a sleeve. You pulled it through and put your mind back to the present. The season had brought about plenty of changes of its own. Like Kyra's visit, though, that was, like Kyra's visit, though that too was coming to an end today. You were happy you'd finally gotten the chance to know her. You'd become extremely fond of her. You didn't really like her. Your mind wasn't made up. You didn't care. You became extremely fond of her. The neighborhood was about to feel a lot emptier. You'd finished dressing, which was good. Cove would be there any moment. You agreed to see his mom off together. Officially, the plan was that you'd come over to bring him around to his house when she was ready to set off, but you both knew that you'd be hanging out for at least a little while beforehand. Kyra's visit had troubled Cove when it first happened. It had been a sudden change thanks to Mr. Holden's infamous tendency to surprise people. Once he was able to adjust, he'd been in pretty good spirits with her around. It was a relief for everyone. You turned to your desk where the box containing your accessories resided. That struck you like a bolt. A thought struck you like a bolt, and your eyes bored into the box. Should you wear an, ankle for, an anklet for Cove's visit today? Not some nice ones that you hadn't used in a while. You put one on, you decided to wear several, you didn't wear one. Let's do one. Less is more. As you, the, as you threaded the hoop through the clasp, you started to wonder if Cove would spot what you'd done, and how he'd react if he did. A cheeky grin grew on your face. The next thought that, creased, that crossed your mind was, it would only be polite to get the door. You went downstairs to wait. You couldn't wait to see him. So you went downstairs to meet him. He knew your house well enough. You could land in your room to wait. You couldn't wait to see him, so you went downstairs. You bounded on the stage, your hands gliding over the rail. You wanted to make sure you got there first. If you didn't hurry, your mom's might answer it. It was only a few minutes later when the doorbell rang. As you chose to stand, as you chosen to stand beside it to wait for Cove, there was no delay in pulling it open. Cove was there just as you'd expected. Seeing you, he flashed a bright hey. grin. Hi, Nan. Hi, Cove. Come on in. Once he stepped inside, he beckoned for him to follow you upstairs. Back up in, back up in your room, you sat down in your bed and waited for Cove to settle in, as you knew he would. With other guests, you might have offered them a seat, but you and Cove were long past those tentative stages of friendship. Your was as familiar to him as his own. You watched as Cove sat in your desk chair, his preferred spot. He rolled it closer to the bed to make it easier to chat, tweaking the angle so that he was facing you truly. Once happy with the position, he leaned in towards you, hands held in his lap. His actions weren't the ones of someone who planned on moving from his spot anytime soon, even though you had an appointment to keep together that day. When's your mom leaving? Don't worry about it. <laughs> that was a cute line. We still got some time. She still got a shower and stuff before she goes. She didn't want to just keep hanging around while she. Ah. She didn't want me to just keep hanging around while she was doing that. He lifted his head, his gaze drifting out through the window, and chuckled. I can't believe she's already leaving. That's when I'm getting used to her being there every day. He leaned back in the chair, a wry smile tickling his cheeks. 
Yeah, he nodded. She'll be back. Oh. Sorry, time's going by so fast. He nodded. Mm. He shook his head as if shaking out the topic like a dog whipping off water following a dip in the sea. Cove looked back at you, lips parted as he was about to speak, but instead his eyes widened and his mouth closed in a tiny frown. Something had caught his attention. <laughs> Something wrapped around where the end of your leg met your foot. He cast his eyes back up to your face and down to your ankle and back to your face. He repeated the process once more, twice more, as if struggling to hold the two items in tandem. I don't know why he's reacting this way. I chose that I tended to wear them sometimes, so I don't think... Does he do this every time I wear an ankle? <laughs> Maybe he was weighing up whether this could be a coincidence or not. Or maybe he was just too shy to verbalize his thoughts or was still trying to find the words and this was the most he could manage. The attention made you feel bashful, amused, thrilled, regretful, please, amused. It was hard not to laugh at Coe's scrambled response. You stifled your laughter with a hand clasped firmly around your mouth, even so you could feel the way the smile had lifted to your face. On his next glance back to your face, Ko saw your expression had shifted. You watched as his bewilderment eroded into mortification as he realized he'd been caught staring. <laughs> yeah, it's not staring at my legs, dude. He quickly spun in his chair to face the wall instead, allowing you to glimpse the, <laughs> the flesh that spread all the way to his ears. His embarrassment finally wore up enough for him to pipe up again. I hope you're not doing that to make fun of me. What do you mean? Sorry, it's not about you. You kept your mouth shut. What do you mean? You know, about what I said before on the road trip. What did you say before? Co groaned, <laughs> lifting his head up to the ceiling. <laughs> He'd not bought your act. <laughs> Why do I ever tell you things? You left the topic there. How's it look? How's it look? You lifted your leg up and pointed it towards his chair so he could get the best view. Co just huffed in response. He jerked his face to the side. You waited patiently, not taking your eyes off of him or lowering your foot until he gave in. Well? With a roll of the eye, he conceded. <laughs> I think it looks good. Co prodded an accusing finger in your direction. But you already know that, because I told you. <laughs> his comment drew a grin from you. He smiled back, the final shadows of his frantic initial reactions left aside. Co perched an elbow in the chair's arm and propped his jaw against his curled hand. There was a natural ease to his movements, a familiarity from the echoes of all the times before when he sat in the same position. This is a really nice summer. Totally. It was alright. I'm glad we got to spend so much time together. Mm, I've had better. Looking forward to the next. Not in your agreement. Totally. Cove, still nestled cozily in your chair, smiled at your response. How are your fish? Really good. Things in the tank are stable and everyone's looking healthy. That's nice to hear. You learned from Cove how hard it was to maintain an aquarium. Thor is always been busy. No, Thor has been busy. I keep staring between the plants and out again when I walk by like a game of peekaboo. Or hide and seek. Yeah. Cove idly glanced out the window. He gave a resigned sigh. It's gonna be harder to surf, you know, school with getting colder out. I might store my board away. I don't know how I'm gonna go on without surfing. I like surfing, but I wish it liked me. I'm over surfing now. Surfing's cool when we can. Sorry, Cove. I like surfing, but I wish it liked me. I can't stick to the board. <laughs> He gave a light smile coupled with a shrug as a response. Won't be long until we get our grades for that summer work we did. Oh yeah, I think mine's gonna go well. Oh, we'll just have to see what mine are like. You think we'll see Miranda around school this year? Probably, she could be in one of our classes again. You hoped you'd see her often. It'd be nice to see her again. You weren't interested. It didn't really matter to you. It'd be nice to see her again. Min, Co. A sudden call from downstairs caught you both unaware. You nearly forgotten the world outside your room. And the guilty look on his face, Cove had done the same. Just had a call. Cove's mom is ready to go. If you're quick, she might keep the mandated motherly smothering to a minimum. You doubted that, but it was nice that mom and Miss Priest had their strange sense of humor in common. Your eyes met Coe's. Wordlessly, you headed downstairs together. Each step on the way was painfully slow, like he was trying to delay the inevitable. His whole body tensed up leaving the house, and Coe froze all together before you could cross the street. The door is open. Dad must be taking your stuff out. Swallowed hard. He's really gonna leave. 
He smiled at him reassuringly. He gave his back a pat, rested a hand on his arm. This isn't the last time you'll ever see her. He gave his back a pat. The motion was soft and you weren't sure if he even noticed at first. It'll be okay. Cub's vital lip quivered and he turned away. He gave us back a couple more reassuring pats. Thanks. After that, some of the conflict roaring on his face eased a bit. Together, he went across the street and inside his house, finding his parents in the living room surrounded by his mom's packed things. Hey, kids. Good tidy. I just called the taxi. Hmm. Hi. And hi, Nin. So glad to see you today. It was fabulous getting to know you this summer. I finally got to put a face to a name I've heard so many times. She winked and Cove pouted on cue over the teasing. I'm really happy I got to meet you too. I hope you had a good time visiting. Bye. You didn't say anything. I'm happy I got to meet you too. Hopefully it won't be too long before we see each other again. Nodding, Kara turned her attention back to the boys. She patted Cliff on the arm with a warm smile, and then she enveloped Cove in a crushing hug. Initially, Cove squirmed to break free from her grip, but his mom was unfazed and kept him locked in place. Heartbeats later, he gave in and hugged her back tightly. I'm so glad. And I'm so happy this trip was a success. Cliff looked like he was bursting with pride, and then Cove stiffened. Kyra loosened her hold on him long enough to study his face, concerned. She spoke her next words in a whisper that had been met just for a son. Do you want to unshelve it? Raising an eyebrow, Cliff watched him carefully. His smile began to falter. Cliff's gaze moved to the floor. He looked like he was grappling with where to begin, but then Cliff smacked his hands to his own cheek. The noise caught everyone's attention. Cliff's eyes were wide, and you could clearly see the light bulb moment he was experiencing on his face. It shouldn't have been a surprise. I went behind your back again. Yeah. <sighs> and it only took me until the very last moments to realize it. Crossing his arms, Cliff laughed at himself. You could tell it was out of frustration and disbelief rather than the usual good-natured feelings. I'm so sorry. I really thought... I thought I'd gotten better at this. You have. Cliff's voice was small, but it was enough to break through his dad's thoughts. Cliff's mouth pulled into a small smile. Hey. It's been a long time since something like this happened. Not long enough. You deserve better than a... Oh my goodness. Not long enough. You deserve better than a blockhead falling back into old habits just because things seem to be going good. It won't keep happening. I promise I'll work on it. We all can work on it. I can try hard to be my, myself to be in on the loop on what's actually happening over here. Abby's smile quickly spread across Coast face and he answered delicately. Okay. He felt relieved seeing how much the whole family had grown together since he first met them. They could talk to each other more easily. After that, it wasn't long before the taxi arrived, not rolling up in front of the house and in clear view of the open door. Kyra stood up, smiling sadly. Well, that's my ride. Yeah. The matching reply got a chuckle out of Kyra as you all filed out of the house. Father and son went with Kyra's bags in hand. Once outside, you spotted your family waiting by the street. To your surprise, Derek was also with them. He stood uncomfortably and he waved as soon as you noticed him. What's that? Hey, Nin. Hi, Cove. When'd you get here? My dad dropped me off just a little bit ago. Thought I could visit one more time before school started. Sorry. You picked a busy time. Sorry. Also, sorry for my voice. It seems that I reached my limit. Derek couldn't even look at Cove. He nervously kept rolling a pebble with the bottom of his shoe. Sorry. I wasn't even thinking that your mom would be leaving today. I'm sorry, dude. Well, you're not interrupting anything. You're always welcome here. Would have been sad if I didn't get to say goodbye before leaving. I think so, too. It was apparent Derek would have preferred to have gotten there at a more opportune moment. He never liked seeming impolite, but their reassuring words soothed his worries. The engine he was holding in his body lessened, and he looked like he was feeling much more like himself. Bye, Derek. It was fun getting to know you. Bye, ma'am. Is there, uh, anything I can do to help? Nah. Nah, don't worry yourself over that. We're just about to set. In that short amount of time, Cliff had gathered up and packed the bags into the trunk. 
Kyra took one last look at everyone's side. All right, I don't want to keep the driver waiting. It's time to head out. The little crowd that had formed started their chorus of farewells and well wishes traveling. But Kyra still made no move to get into the taxi. She placed all of her attention on Cove. I'll call when I get to the airport. And when I may get to Nevada. Also, you'd better call the moment you walk in the door at home. Otherwise, we'll be wondering all night if you got in trouble on the way there. I could do that. And could you call tomorrow, too, so I can tell you how school went? Of course. I want to hear all about it. Kyra put a hand on Cove's head and affectionately ruffled his hair one last time. She then let go, only to move on to squeezing his cheeks and her hands instead. Mom! I love you so much, baby! <laughs> she was chuckling by the time she freed him and rounded things off with a small tap to the tip of his nose. Cove rubbed at his face with a grin. Finally, she walked to the car while waving and took her seat in the taxi. Cliff hooked an arm around Cove's shoulder and kept him close as he began to pull away. For a moment, Cove looked up at his dad and then wrapped his arm across his back. Bye, Bye Mom. Bye. Travel safe. Kyra rolled down the window and stuck her head out of it. She waved again while blowing kisses at Cove and Cliff. See you again. Before she was out of sight, you decided to call out with her, your family and hers, wave goodbye, watch quietly. Call out. As you added your voice to the others, you watched Kyra's smile grow larger. The cab turned around another road and completely disappeared from view. Cove let go of his dad and took a few steps out into the empty street, still looking in the direction his mom went. He smiled quietly, deep in thought. He got the impression that Cove was feeling better than he was earlier. He was finally content with the way things were. The summer breeze uh, brought a sweet-sounding jingle across the way. It was the wind chime he'd given Cove. He'd hung it in the front of his house, and it had become a very familiar sound in this neighborhood. You jumped a bit when your mom put a hand on your shoulder, pulling you away from your thoughts. She smiled when you looked at her. <sighs> that was a great vacation, huh? Yeah, I don't think so. You nodded in agreement. You shrugged. I don't know. Summer is over until this isn't over until the second I fall asleep. You nod. Um. Hmm. You nodded in agreement. Yeah, it was a good one. Cove walked back over to the group, so genuinely happy. Derek grinned at him welcomingly, and everyone else smiled at him, even Elizabeth. Well. Ma clapped her hands together, bringing everyone's attention back to the present. It's almost lunchtime. I think I'll put something special together. Her eyes sparkled with the plan, and Mom smiled. I bet you could use some help with that. That'd be wonderful. Derek glanced between the two, his eyebrows furrowed. Is there something I could do? Your mom's exchanged a, fa a fond expression. Mom shook her head. How sweet. That's very sweet, Derek, but it's alright. It's not your job. Technically, your dad left you under Cliff's watch. You're meant to be taken care of by him. Not doing chores for the neighbors. Mom laughed a little at her own joke. You watched Derek look away, discouraged. <laughs> I feel like, is there something I can do is, is a Derek's catchphrase. So I got distracted by a butterfly outside my window for a second. Nice. Hmm. It's okay. It's okay. I don't mind. He was a little bashful about it. You wondered if Mom's joke had just reminded him he wasn't initially meant to be invited to lunch. It was getting a little awkward. Oops. Mom grinned sympathetically. Her comment was meant to lighten the mood, not bring it back down. Ma tried again to get things moving forward. Why don't we kids go have fun? You can all come back in about an hour. We'll make it enough for everyone. Mom nodded in agreement. Sounds good. Another stunning idea, Lonnie. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> oh. That sounds like a plan then. I don't want to cramp your style. I got some stuff to work on, so I'll just be out of your hair this afternoon. You should come by later too. No reason you should be the odd man out. Mom seemed amused at Cliff rubbing his neck nervously. He grinned a wavering but pleased smile. Much. I appreciate the invite. He looked over the assembled crowd with knowing glances. I can help too. With as many people as you're feeding, that's going to be a lot of food. Mm. Didn't you hear what we told Derek? It wouldn't be fair to make you cook when we're the ones inviting you in. <laughs> Ma raised an eyebrow and Cliff waved it off. Come on. I insist. 
Derek will be missing time with his pals. This would be a break for me. I'm quite the chef. Mom and Mom exchanged further glances before Mom shrugged. An airtight argument. If you're sure, we'll, you'll, we'll be happy to have you, Chef Cliff. Cliff's grin widened, and he seemed more hyped than you expected him to be with helping lo with lunch. Cliff shook his head, a fond smile on his face. And all us grown-up people will be heading inside. I assume the rest of you kiddos are staying out? Maybe not all of them. Ma tilted her head, a silent question for Elizabeth. Your sister thought for a moment. Right. I'll stay with the kids. That's fantastic. That's great. Both your moms smiled at her while Derek and Cove didn't seem to appreciate her phrasing. With the plan decided, all three parents waved and headed for your house. It was just you teenagers now. Elizabeth looked at you and the others, a curious expression on her face. So? So? What now? You silently wondered if Elizabeth only stayed out with you to avoid getting roped into work. And again, she could just genuinely want to hang out. You couldn't tell with your sister. Cove spoke up after no one else did to answer Elizabeth's question. Want to go down to the shopping street? It's been a while, and I don't think there's a lot of other things we could agree on. Yeah, sure. Awesome. Sounds awesome to me. I'm like, you guys, I haven't been there a thousand and one times. It's new to me. Let's do it. Alright, if you guys want to. Eh, nothing else to do. Let's do it. You strode along the road as a group, down to the beach, and then to the left. It took less than 15 minutes to arrive. One of the conveniences of Sunset Bird. The four of you looked over at the familiar shops, trying to see if anything caught your attention this time. Derek was the most enthusiastic. He checked out every stall with his eyes wide with wonder. Elizabeth and Cove were in good spirits as well. That's so cool! He ran over to a street musician, who was currently doing a card trick for a group of enchanted tourists. Derek clapped when the magician showed a middle-aged man his card. He ran back to the group with a curious gleam on his face. Hmm? What does it take to perform here, anyway? Do you have to ask somebody, or do you just show up and start doing stuff? Who would you even ask? It's a public street. Hey, Miss Mayor, can I pull a rabbit out of my hat? Please. Flopsy is well behaved, I promise. Derek chuckled, his eyes searching up and down the scene. Maybe, Maybe there's a boss of the shopping street? No one does any of this around my neighborhood. It's just regular stores behind walls. It's different if someone wants a real store, but here I'm pretty sure people are just putting on their little shows whenever they want to and do whatever. That's so neat. Would we be allowed would we uh, would we be allowed to do something too? Cove laughed, and Derek began almost vibrating with excitement. Elizabeth rolled her eyes. What, what would we do? Well, I don't know what. Not yet. I mean, I just found out it's a possibility, you know? Well, there's gotta be something. We know cool stuff. I'm sure if we think about it, we could plan a show that'd really get a crowd pumped. You thought it was a great idea and wanted to be part of it. You felt he could try this on his own. You thought Derek needed to abandon that I bad idea stat. You gave a look to the other two. You gave a look to the others. Derek continued to brainstorm out loud about different potential performances while you glanced over at Cove and Elizabeth. I mean, I can mount a soccer ball on my head. Last time I tried, I got eight bounces before it fell. I wouldn't bring a ball here. Why? What? Uh, Cove gestured to everything around the stalls. The people, all the colorful chaos that made up the shopping street. Would you want to chase a lost ball here? And what if it is somebody? Even if you're good, somebody else could bump into you. That's true. Derek thought about it some more, then he watched another performance performer, a woman doing tricks with two small dogs, one with fluffy and cream cobbled, colored while the other with a cool gray. The woman held up rings. Both animals jumped through the openings, happy to receive a treat at the end. Derek frightened. Maybe I'll teach crabs how to race. Crabs? It could work. With some amusement, the game <laughs> continued to peruse the stalls. Elizabeth found some earrings with a dangling, badly misprinted globe that everyone laughed at. Cove picked out a blob as Iceland, but <laughs> Derek thought that it had to be Greenland. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a world with what looks like nine continents? I think you're both wrong. <laughs> you wanted to decide with Cove, you backed up Derek, you agreed with your sister. No, it's Australia. You stayed out of it. No, it's Australia. <laughs> the other three giggled at your introduction. Suddenly, Cove froze. You stared at him and then tried to see what caught his attention. When you saw a familiar face down the way, it all made sense. Between the crowds, his bright hair stood out like a neon green bowl in the kitchen sink. It was Jeremy. Jeremy slowly drifted his eyes down the street, and his eyes widened in mutual recognition. He definitely noticed you. Derek frowned and Cove tensed up. He couldn't help but remember the last time you'd seen Jeremy at Miranda's birthday party. No wonder Cove was already defensive. You stood there shocked. 
You glared at Jeremy. You waved. You decided to smile. You looked away. You looked away. You didn't want to even start with Jeremy's shenanigans today. Elizabeth raised an eyebrow. Her gaze swept over Jeremy without a hint of a clue. Jeremy simply scoffed at himself and waded deeper into the crowd of people. Dick relaxed and exhaled loudly. I'm glad he's not going to start anything. He peeked over at Elizabeth with a tiny smirk. See? That was the mean kid. What? Huh? She still didn't get it. That first summer day hadn't made nearly as much of an impression on her as it did for Derek, but she smiled. But he smiled and waved it off. Just forget about him. I already have. He laughed and co smiled lightly. He seemed a much better mood now that Jeremy was gone. Your eyes wandered over to where Jeremy disappeared. You hadn't forgotten the day you met him either. He was only going to be in town for a vacation with the parents he hated, and that glimpse was probably the last time you'd ever see him. You mentioned that realization to everyone, you got the thought to yourself. You broke from the roof and went after him. That's interesting. The idea of going after him interests me. I'll be back. Min? It won't be long. He headed off after Jeremy, cutting into the crowd he disappeared to. It didn't take long until you spied his distinct figure. You cut out with him, ducking in between a tourist couple and sidestepping into the side street that he'd wandered off to. He took a breath. Jeremy? Jeremy's slouched posture stiffened, and his neck turned to look over his shoulder. His scowl deepened when he saw it was you. What now? Do you really think looking at somebody means they're inviting you to start following them? Are you too stupid to get that I don't want to talk to you? You're not going to be here much longer, are you? Oh, that's right. I'm amazed a pea brain like you could figure that out without me having to spell it out. So what? I'm leaving in a few days. School starts next week. It's not like I can live here and, what, teleport to classes? Psst. Good riddance. I thought it'd be nice to say bye. Don't come back. I wish you could have really gotten to know each other. You didn't say anything. I wish you could have gotten to know each other. Jeremy's face scrunched up. Saying that's pointless. Ugh, annoying. He stomped off into the crowd, vanishing into the sea of other tourists. When you couldn't see him anymore, you shook your head. That was it then. You turned around and saw Cove, Derek, and your sister shuffling through the crowd. Derek saw you and ran forward, the other two following close. Are you alright? Yeah, I'm fine. I just had my last conversation with Jeremy. He's for sure leaving. Oh, what? Okay, who cares about the kid? Co shrugged in a she has a point kind of way. He nodded. There wasn't anything else to do about it now. Jeremy was unlike anyone you'd ever met before. Yeah, his default seemed angry. He thought he was horrible, he thought he was weird, stupid, pitiful, okay. Didn't know what to think. I thought he was pitiful. He and the group moved on from Stall and from Jeremy. It didn't take long for everyone to return to the joking. You all enjoyed what little time you had left as Elizabeth mentioned the hour was almost up. A little trip had flown by, and lunch must have been waiting for you now. Derek bounced on the balls of his feet. Okay. Come on, guys, let's get going so we can eat. I'm starving. If we have to, can't wait. I've had enough walking around. Homebound, here we go. Not as silently. Homebound, here we go. Cub stretched one of his arms lazily. Let's go then. Nodded at him appraisingly. You asked Cub to carry you back to the house. You nodded. This also interests me. Hey, Cove? Yeah? Could you carry me back home? <laughs> what? <laughs> Cove smiled like he was amused while the tilt of his eyebrow was full of disbelief. He explained you wanted a piggyback ride. You didn't want to walk back. You told him it was a special occasion. You decided to let it go. Piggyback ride, please. I want a piggyback ride, and you're the only one big enough to give me one. <laughs> Cove sighed and shook his head. Elizabeth and Derek became a chorus of laughter. Come on, it'll be fun. All right. Cove stepped over to you. He looked like he couldn't believe what he was doing. Your lips corked into a large smile. Aw, oh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> he carefully crouched down in front of you so that you climb on. It wasn't hard to hop on. He slipped his arms under your legs and did his best to lift you. It was wobbly, but he managed to stand all the way up. Elizabeth watched with a smirk on her face while Derek laughed even harder. It was fair to say that your antics were entertaining. You were just glad he went along with it. Cove carried you home contentedly. Other than a few good-natured jokes at your expense, he didn't complain. You made it all the way back to your house without putting you down. It was a pleasant walk home, and in no time you'd made it back. Derek got the front door and held it open for everyone as you moseyed inside. 
The three parents were still in the kitchen. They looked up and waved. Welcome back, everyone. You made it in time. Hi. I hope you're hungry. No, I hope you're hungry. I'm Oops. Okay. Oops. Hi. When COVID brought you inside, the parents couldn't help but notice the odd conveyance. Your moms were unsure, and Mr. Holden raised an eyebrow. Okay. Did you pull something in? I'm okay. Aw, Cove, you've gotten so strong. Good and reliable, too. What a guy. Cove rolled his eyes at the commentary, then started walking you to your couch. He bent down, and you let yourself flop back onto it. Thanks for the lift. Cove exhaled loudly and shook out his arms. He just seemed relieved that he made it. <laughs> so did everyone have a nice time out? She gestured for people to take a seat at the table. Plates and silverware had already been placed out. You took your normal seat. Elizabeth sat across from you, and Derek took the seat to your left. Cove sat on her right. Oh yeah, we had a great time. It was fine. I had fun. I liked it. It was okay, I guess. The bank heist went off without a hitch. <laughs> your, joke some, your joke got some chuckles going around the table. That's good in my book. Casually, Mr. Holden sat in the empty seat across from Cove. He smiled at you and all the other kids. Mom set down a platter full of water glasses on the table. She looked down at the gathering. It's a good thing we have eight chairs. I can't remember the last time we had a group this big over for a meal. Can you pass the drinks down to the other side? Make sure you all get one. Sure. Those close to the cups obliged and started offering waters around. As everything got set up, Ma chided Elizabeth to take her elbows off the table. Now. And you shouldn't slouch. She pointed at Mr. Holden, who was leaning forward with both arms on the table. <laughs> Oops. Mr. Holden seemed unsure about all the sudden attention and carefully rearranged his posture to something suitable for a fancy dinner. He smiled sheepishly at Ma. Elizabeth rolled her eyes and Ma gave a level look at her. You shouldn't be impolite to a guest in the house, either. Elizabeth groaned long and long suffering. Ma giggled and Mr. Holden chuckled. Not bad. A lot of you could learn a thing or two from Derek. He has the best manners here. Derek blushed, but it was true. His posture was upright and formal. He even held his fork gracefully. His table manners on top of his attempts to age your parents made him the model of meal attendee be uh, the model of meal attendee behavior. Aww. It's nothing. It's true though, you've been a lovely guest. I've noticed that too. It's always nice when you stay over, Derek. Derek smiled and sat a little taller in his chair. Hmm. Hmm. And do you have anything good to say about our other guests? She looked deliberately at Cove with a teasing smirk. Or is there just nothing to say? Hmm. Well, Cove is my number one, but he still he does still clean his hands by wiping them on his pants. Cove frowned at that and absentmindedly brushed his hands on his pant legs. <laughs> your moms laughed lightly. There, there. Elizabeth, you should know after all these years, Cove's hardly a guest anymore. <laughs> Cove smiled awkwardly. Thanks. <laughs> manners, schmanners. Who cares? I don't think it's that big of a deal. You teased Cove for his bad habit. You complimented Derek on his politeness. You joked that Derek was basically an adult. You kept quiet and took a bite of food. Um. Man. I mean, these don't really seem like choices that would matter. Really? Ugh. <sighs> Stretchy. Remember to stretch. Alright, and all in stretching, you might as well get a drink. Do, 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 do. Sorry, I started feeling really cooped up all of a sudden. I might take a walk after this before I start cleaning my room. Alright. Um, who cares? Jeez. I joke that Derek's basically an adult. Next time, Derek's really going to 
Derek really is going to stay inside to cook. He's practically a mini adult. He's joining us grown-ups and you're going to have to treat him like one. Okay, so Mr. Suarez, how go your tactics? Derek shook his head and chuckled. Everyone ate their meals together and continued to hang out for the afternoon. After the food, you and the others played a couple games and talked about plans for the upcoming year. The time passed by quickly, and soon it was time to part ways. Mr. Holden talked to your moms, and Cove drifted over to you, knowing that as soon as his dad's finished up, he'd be leaving. It'd be cool to stay, but we've got some stuff to do before everything closes okay. today. Yeah, yeah, bye. Could you move? I need the phone. Cove raised an eyebrow, and Elizabeth impatiently gestured behind him. Cove realized he was standing right in front of where the receiver was placed. He sidestepped out of the way and shook his head, clearly thinking Elizabeth was rushing too much. Your sister made a beeline for the phone and started dialing the number of what you figured was one of her friends. Knowing Elizabeth, she was going to be on there for a while. You, Cove, and Derek shuffled closer to the door. It seemed like Mr. Holden was wrapping up this conversation, so everyone started saying their various farewells. Talk to you later. See you later, Cove. We gotta do this again sometime. Yeah, see you. Cove turned to you and smiled slightly. Bye, then. You hugged him goodbye, you patted him on the back, you nudged his shoulder, ruffled his hair, you waved. Patted him on the back. Bye, Kof. You reached closer and patted him fondly on the back. Kof patted you on the shoulder in return. It was reassuring, a promise that you'd see him again soon. Glad we got to hang out today. Seriously, dude, we'll have to hang out later. I'm gonna miss you during school. He offered Kof a high five and the two boys clapped their hands together. Cove and his dad left soon after that. Your parents started cleaning up the house, and Elizabeth, was still, and Elizabeth was still chatting to her friends on the phone. It was just you and Derek left. He elected to stay outside in front of the house to wait for his dad to pick him up. You decided to keep your guest company, although he was originally Cove's visitor. A light summer breeze blew through your hair, and Derek shifted his weight from foot to foot. Thanks for waiting with me. He, ki he kicked at the ground distractedly. Well, Dad's still going to be a while, so do you want to go for a walk? Sure, I don't mind. The two of you walked down the street again, just wandering without a destination planned. It was a quiet stroll. Too quiet for Derek being the company. Turned to him when you noticed he wasn't saying a word. That was unusual. Derek's always a Derek always had something he could chat about. You weren't sure if you should ask about it. Somehow, you ended up at the old park near the beach. You glanced over to Derek once more, still expecting to say something any second, so any second now. However, nothing came from him. In fact, he noticed a frown creeping on his face. Derek smiled when he realized you were watching. At least, his mouth was turned up. There wasn't anything that felt really happy in his expression. He turned away, and the smile fell off his face. His eyes stared intently at the ground, and he raised an eyebrow. Everything okay? Want to talk about something? I'm here. Derek, what's going on? He got quiet. If you want to talk about something, I'm here. I'm a little sad. Since the school's starting back up again, it's going to be harder to visit. I'm going to have homework and clubs and practices and everything else. It sucks. It really sucks that we go to different schools. His face scrunched up and his fists were closed tightly together. This is really concerning him. What if we don't have time? It channeled some optimism into the conversation. He shared those worries. He channeled some optimism. We'll make time. We could talk over the phone and have plans for weekends. It'll be okay. Derek looked up at the sky. It was orange and purple with little wisps of clouds scattered around. A plane flew high with a jet stream trailing behind it. Then he turned to the ground again. Derek's face was tilted far enough down that it was harder to read his expression. Hey, Nin. I actually wanted to talk to you about something, if you don't mind. There was a pause and you waited for him to finish his thought. Hmm. I was just wondering, do you like guys at all? Like, would you ever want to be with someone who was a boy? Sorry, that's, if that's weird to ask. I don't want to be with a guy, maybe. I don't know. I didn't, you didn't answer. kind of don't want to talk about that. Maybe? Okay, then he hesitated before finishing his question. No. <laughs> Derek! <laughs> this is making me sad. <laughs> I really hope that the DLC for you comes out soon. <laughs> Don't worry, you'll get your chance. <laughs> I figured that's what this was about. So, uh, what I mean is, um, mm, is, is, is there, is there any guy you think that's, uh, kind of cool that you like around here? Not at school or anything like that. He ducked his head further. He thought about it. I like you. Well, I like Cove. Mr. Holden. <laughs> there are a lot of guys I think are cool. Not right now. I don't really want to say that. Well, I like Cove. 
I don't want to make him sad. I can say Mr. Holden, but... Oh, I'm, I feel bad for Derek. I'm sorry, man. You're not the love interest this time. Oh, that's rough, buddy. Uh, Derek DLC, Derek DLC, Derek DLC. <laughs> I feel so bad about this. Uh, I don't, I know what I need to pick, but I feel really bad about choosing it. <laughs> this is hard. Oh, I like Cove. Derek raised an eyebrow. He didn't look at all convinced. Uh. I can't tell where you're kidding around or being oh that you're kidding around or being serious. I really didn't think you was Cove. Derek started to mumble to himself, sounding very confused. Maybe they didn't really get my question? Uh so Derek pulled himself together. Somewhat meekly, he looked at you while he tried to project confidence. His posture was too tight for you to believe it. He was nervous. So I guess that's his I'm not sure if that necessarily shows us our standing with Cove. But um that's interesting, what he said. Alright. You know, thinking ahead and everything is important. You gotta get yourself a game plan and all that. It's good to make plans, especially backup plans. Don't, don't, don't volunteer to be a backup plan. Please? He babbled, all full of energy and forced gusto. <laughs> well anyways, I heard about this thing where people make packs with their good friends that if they don't find anyone else, they get to get- You're- how old? Why are you thinking about this? Together together, like, they get married and stuff. So I was thinking, since it's good to have plans, it might be cool if we did something like that. Derek, that's such a sad thing. Why do you know about this? <laughs> His eyes widened and he started to make frantic hand gestures. Just you know, that we never have to worry about the future or finding someone. We can set it like a whole decade in the future, forever from now. We'd have graduated high school and probably college too. We'd have jobs and be really grown up. Hmm. We'd probably have our own places and maybe our own pets and student loans and cars. <laughs> student loans! <laughs> Alright, uh... Derek babbled on for a while more, so as if all the words he tells in silence during your walk had burst out now, all at once. So yeah, what do you think? That's a good idea. I think having a backup plan sounds smart. You accepted the idea because you like Derek. I'll think about it. I don't think that would work. I'm sorry, Derek. Do you like me? Yeah, I'm the type who just asks straight out. Of course I like you, but it's not. He had to pause, desperate to find a way to explain himself. It's... Well, you don't have to think about that kind of thing right now. It's better to worry about all that later when we're grown up. You like me. That's why it's a good idea to have a plan, you know? And well, honestly, I think you and me could work out the best for that. Oh. So... It's a good idea. Alright, it's the same of all choices. I'll think about what you said. It's kind of a big decision for just being put on the spot. Yeah, sure. Don't worry about it. It's just an idea. Thanks for hearing me out and answering my questions and stuff. You both a little worried that Derek wasn't happy. When he saw your face, he smiled encouragingly. I promise I'm not mad. I was just wondering. I'm sure things will be okay in the future no matter what. He just nodded. He didn't spend much longer at the park after that. Derek didn't want to miss it. Uh, Derek didn't want to miss his dad, so you both made your way down to your street. After Derek went back home, you decided to settle in for the night. Stretching your arms over your head, you noticed that the living room and phone were free. Took it easy, called Lee. Lee. You picked up the receiver and quickly punched in the familiar number while going to take a seat on the couch. Soon enough, after explaining the situation to the housekeeper, Lee answered. Hi, Lee. Can you talk? Definitely. We practically have to. My gosh, can you believe it's almost time for school to start? What happened to our summer? School starts first thing tomorrow for me. 
ill, and I thought starting next week was bad enough. Enjoy your last week. Oh, I will. I hope you'll survive your first day. Me too. I need a good year. Ditto. And at least summer was nice while it lasted, right? We were busy. Yeah. Finally, you thought about all the best memories you made this summer. Lee was there for some reason. No, for some reason. Lee was there for some, but there were so many you hadn't filled her in on yet. You reminisced about a moment of your summer. You moved on to talk with about her. Let's talk about her first. What was your big highlight of the summer, Lee? Talking to you was always the best part of my summer. Uh -huh. Even though it was a phone call, you just knew Lee was winking at you. <laughs> you laughed. You shook your head. Go on, tell me. Good, I'm glad you picked the right answer. <laughs> that had Leah laughing hard for a few moments. Alright, okay. So a high point for me was when I took that trip with my parents to Europe. That was amazing. You and Lee continued to go over your adventures until you were both yawning to each other over the phone. At that, you decided it was time to say goodbye for now. You did have school to wake up for in the morning. Bye, Lee. Bye! Night, Nin. Talk to you later. You left the phone on the side table for now. Looking at the clock on the wall, you saw that there was only ten minutes until your mom would be insisting you had to go to bed so you could be rested enough for school. You stretched your legs out on the couch and sighed in defeat, watching the minute hand change one minute closer to bedtime. You rearranged yourself, feeling restless and looking out the window. Startled initially, you fought, spotted a figure out in the hills. It was Cove, of course. When the surprise faded, you realized it wasn't that much of a shock at all. It was exactly something Cove would do. You went outside to meet up with him. You ran off to go see him. Left him alone, smacked the window for his attention, you opened the window and called out. Ran off. Sprinting, you reached the front door in record time. You didn't think you'd see Cove again that day. You had to go to him. Fireflies! When you arrived, you noticed how many fireflies were out that night. They drifted along lazily, barely minding your presence as you waded through to reach the top of the hill. Cove turns towards you as you approach, and you noticed right away that he looked happy to see you. Hey. You had a bounce in your step. You weren't sure how long you'd get before your mom's roped you back inside for bed. Hey, what are you doing out here? Nothing. Nothing. Not really. He shrugged, seeming unhappy with his own answer. You stared at him, waiting for him to continue. Well, I guess I was feeling kind of weird about stuff, so I'm getting some fresh air before bed. You really should sleep. I know how you feel. I feel good. I hope you feel better. You shrugged back. You nodded. I know how you feel. It's hard to stay still. Tomorrow's gonna be the start of a new year. At the mention of school, a small noise escaped him. Cove let himself fall back onto his butt and then all the way down so he was laying down on his back. He looked up at the sky. He laid down yourself, sat in the grass, stood there, sat on his chest. I think sitting on his chest sounds stupid, so I want to do it. He sat on his chest. He made himself a pretty available seat with the way he was laid out. You popped yourself square in the middle of his torso. In. <laughs> he jolted up in surprise, like he couldn't get far with you on top of him. He plopped right back into the grass. With a huff, he just gave up on being shocked. Fine. <laughs> he stickered in a self-satisfied way. He'd been lost in thought, or was possibly waiting for you to situate yourself, but he started to speak unprompted again. Thanks for telling me about my dad and the money he offered you to be my friend. This was probably the last thing you were expecting out of him. Cove seemed to be pick, pick, uh, Cove seemed to pick up on that and stretch his arms out wide in front of him. I mean, this is where we met. Remember, it happened that day. You could recall the sad little boy with the pink cast you found in this very spot. Felt like a lifetime ago. I kind of have a strange feeling looking at you. Not in a bad way, just thinking about you then and then seeing you now, it's something. It was almost unbelievable how much of an impact he made out of your life just by moving in next door. You couldn't even imagine what your days might have looked like in a world where you hadn't met him. Coke glanced back at you, waiting for a response, and you had no idea what to say. Then, still without a warning from you, Coke shook his head strongly. What? It's you. Huh? He sickered before answering. He looked thoroughly amused with your reaction. That's what you do all the time, so I'm being you. Wait, excuse me? Shook his head strongly?
Do I do that a lot? Gosh. He's picked up on my habits that I didn't even know I had. You felt bashful. <laughs> Feeling self-conscious, you glanced at the ground and felt a blush burn across your face. Yeah, I actually felt a little embarrassed by that. When you dared look back, you saw that Cope was smiling apologetically. He wasn't trying to be mean with it. Honestly, there weren't many people you could think of who could teach you about something like that. Returning a smile, you realized there was no denying that you two have been around each other for a long time. Cope broke the quiet before he could fully settle. Before he could fully tomorrow. settle. Hey, I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. See you then. With a final wave, Cove headed home, but you stayed there a few minutes longer. Your mind kept going back to a simple statement. See you tomorrow. No matter how much was hanging around you, there were some things in your life that always seemed to remain true. The hills felt warm to you that night. Before you knew it, you were getting comfortable under the weight of under the covers in your room. Your mind couldn't help but still be buzzing with thoughts about the future. You felt Excited, nervous, unsure, nervous. Every bit of your gut felt like it was being turned into a pretzel. A new chapter of your life was about to begin and you were worried what new changes were waiting for you. Slowly, your eyes grew heavily of you, heavy as you drifted into sleep, your mind spinning with wistful thoughts. No matter what happened next, you could only hope that you would make the most of it. You were stared in a dream when the noise from the outside world jostled you. Your eyes stepped open. Noises happened. You just tried to forget it. You stubbornly kept your eyes pressed shut. Stepped open. The lights clatter continued. Now that you're more alert, you could distinguish it as a tapping sound. Quiet, slow, persistent. Each beat was like being poked. You couldn't ignore it. You lifted your head from the pillow and looked for the source. Not much work was needed to puzzle it out. It was from the window. With that, you knew exactly what it was. From the color of the light filtering into your room, it was too early for anyone to be awake, including the sun. It barely hauled itself over the horizon, but that didn't stop some people, it seemed. You sat up in bed and opened the window wide. Cool air, yet not yet warmed by the day, tickled your face as it pushed into your room. And, just as you'd expected, there was your neighbor, crouching on your windowsill. He was fully dressed, though not for school. He was wearing a, wa a wetsuit and a fond smile. Hi, Nin. You stared back, blinking. Uh, so technically we went back to be back to school for a few more hours. <laughs> His voice was delicate, yet deliberate, each word a careful explanation. Classes haven't actually started yet. So, do you want to hit the beach with me one more time this summer? Always. Here we go again. It's way too early. You're crazy. You're so cute. You gave a decisive nod. Always. His smile widened affectionately. You rushed to get changed into something suitable while Cove climbed down, back down to ground level. Your limbs, still half asleep, struggled somewhat as you attempted to coordinate them into a swimsuit, but you got there in the end. Soon you were tiptoeing out your front door, clutching a towel. Cove was already there to greet you. Your eyes met. Cove darted to your destination and back to you. You checked the door was closed, gave, gave him a thumbs up, and the two of you leapt into action. Wordlessly, you began to run down the familiar path at the head. Cove beside you. The thrill of your illicit outing made you want to laugh. Not that you dared. If anyone in your family looked out and saw you, then your summer would be back to being over. One glance at Cove told you it was exact that he was exactly the same, holding back snickers of fear for being heard and caught. The towel streamed out from under your arm like a cape. You were running so fast downhill that simply keeping your balance and not tumbling was a real threat. It wasn't just enough of one to make you slow your pace. For every step you took, the beach was a little closer and the day a little brighter. What lay ahead for you would, would arrive, and you were happy to meet it. That was, that's so, oh, I love that so much. In between. Alright, um, I think I'm going to change the hair a bit. I think I'm going to just make it all match. I could change my pronoun, but I don't really want to feel the urge. Oh. I guess I would be getting around that age, huh?
By now, I'd probably have freckled arms and legs because I'd be outside so much. On my arm. Uh, oh, wait, I should probably actually see if there are any other options for the front of my hair. Now that I'm a teen, I might, now that I'm like later in life, I'd probably dye my hair like this. I think that'd be fine. And I'd probably start putting my hair in a ponytail in the back. Yeah, I think this looks good. Um, by now it would be a crush. Relax. A relaxed crush, I think. By this point. Yeah. Oh, okay, for Co. Warm, candid, quiet, studious, mixed, sporty. Since you're romantically interested in Cove and aren't old enough to decide, and are old enough to start being physically affectionate more seriously, you can choose what initiative level he has throughout step three. Making sure the player experiences what they want is most important in our life, but always putting your choice first can potentially make a relationship feel one-sided. Play bad is some flexibility in how it works out. Low initiative means that Cove will occasionally ask to touch the MC, and in those situations there will always be an opportunity to say yes or no. For example, he won't simply lean over and kiss the MC as a greeting or an emotional moment. Thank God. Every piece of physical interaction will either be initiated or approved by the player before it happens. Middle initiative means that there will be those times where certain times where your cove requests to touch you, many chances to initiate affection on your own, and also cove will pretty regularly give affection automatically. One example would be giving the MC a kiss because he's happy or emotional or something else. In other situations, you can choose not to make the first move in order to give Cove the space to be the one to act afterwards. Overall, he can get romantic, but the player's agency will take priority. High initiative includes everything Middle does, but it also means that player agency will be reduced to a degree in favor of having Cove give physical affection even more frequently and with less prompting. Instead of all the major affection-giving situations being led by a choice menu for you to decide on, some will instead be replaced by Cove acting automatically. This level is only recommended if you're very comfortable with physical affection and would prefer to simply see it happen rather than always holding the reins on it. However, this level is mostly relevant if Cove ends up as your official boyfriend at some point. Situations where high level initiative makes a difference tend to come up in scenes that are exclusive to being in a relationship. The parts that are also included in the mid middle initiative will be seen whether you're dating or not. Once you've picked your level, it can't be changed later, so keep your full playthrough in mind when deciding. We hope you'll enjoy whatever initiative option you decide on. Okay. So, alright, I think I'd choose middle initiative, because that's just how I am. <laughs> Wait, I didn't get to choose how he looks. Though. Oops! I went back too far. Both. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. That ponytail is cute. <laughs> How old is Cove at this step? I guess old Melon. We'll be finishing the in between and starting with step three next time. Yeah, I still like his glasses. The well, coat without ga glasses is pretty cute too. Let me like his hair short just so I can see his earrings better. Real quick. Okay, it, there's only one earring choice. Fine. Sure. One, two, three. Okay. Uh, I like two. All 
Alright, I like these black ones. Um, Luptress. Yeah. Necklace. Casual change page. <gasps> oh, that's a <laughs> that shirt's interesting. I imagine his hair is down when he's sleeping. No earrings. PJ's too. PJ's on. Okay. I am satisfied with that. No glasses. Swimsuit. Um. Blue or pink? Blue. Gla uh, no glasses. No earrings when you're swimming. And formal. I like that shirt. Alright. Done. Uh, he's warm. Alright. The start of classes ended the relaxed free days of summer. It didn't take long for you to get back into the swing of the school year routine. Schedules and homework became the new normal. Derek wasn't around nearly as much. With school and after school activities, there weren't many opportunities for him to take the trip out to your neighborhood. Sometimes you'd hear that he was a training camp or something that he was at a training camp or something like that, but you weren't always sure what he was up to. But you still kept in touch as over the phone as best you could. Or you kind of lost contact. No, we kept in touch. That Jeremy kid did disappear after that summer, and no one ever heard from him again. Where he went or what he did might or what he might be up to was up to, was it? What he what he what, where he went or what he might be up to was a mystery. <laughs> you saw more Miranda around. Since you'd hung out with her on her birthday, she'd opened up to you. The two of you talked regularly. She was the same towards Co. After a while, all three of you developed a real friendship. Where summers came and went like the shores like the waves on the shore of the ocean coming in and out. In your second year of high school, someone new started to visit Sunset Bird, a sunny girl named Terry Brooke. She was a friend Cove made due to them both being ocean obsessed. Terry was more than glad to befriend you too. Someone close to Cove had to be good company, she felt. You were pleased to get along with her as well. Funnily enough, Terry was also extremely tight with Miranda, who she'd known for even longer than Cove. The four of you were able to create a small friend cir circle. As for your home life, the Odeons had also had developments. Changing laws and public perception countrywide made it possible for your moms to openly wear their wedding rings without question. Though they had had a wedding a year ago, it was only recently that the union was officially recognized everywhere in the U.S. That was a good day to, that was a good day, to say the least. Elizabeth came into her own and stopped being quite as irritable. She no longer worried about perceived childishness as she grew up for real. She didn't even mind being called Lizzie again, though most people used Liz. She eventually graduated high school and moved out to attend college in another state. It was a lot for you to adjust to your older sister being gone. Liz never let you forget her role in your life, though, and kept in touch. Cole's relationship with his family improved over the years. Kyra visited several times after that summer, and things became easier between the two. He was also closer with his dad than ever before. You knew they talked more, and this helped prevent a lot of friction before it could start. And Cole only continued to open up to his parents and the rest of the world. He was so bright, he shone. He had willingly joined conversations, make jokes, and put in an effort not to use overly blunt phrasing. <laughs> Cove loved staying inside and learning just as much as ever. By this point, his studies had paid off, and he'd been right near the top of the class by the last years of high school. The friendship between you and Cove had cultivated for years, though the achievement got in the way. Full-grown friendship, huh? Remained con and the, the friendship between you and Cove that you cultivated for years remained consistent. The two of you were close confidants. It was strange to look back on it all. The future faded into the present, and then was simply the past. Even the most fundamental parts of your life couldn't last forever. You felt the most pointedly, you felt that the most pointedly the day you inevitably graduated high school. It was over and you would not be going back ever again. From now on, what came next was your choice. You'd be directing your own life. That was where you were currently, the summer after school had ended, the first summer of true freedom. What used to be a reprieve from the typical is now going to be your first step into adulthood. Wow! Our kitchen looks different, okay. One fine summer morning, you took in what had become a very special scene, the whole family having a meal together. Your big sister Liz still hadn't lived at home full time for a couple of years, but she arrived last week to spend the season here since it was an off semester for her. 
She wanted to make sure she was in town because he now also graduated high school, so who knew how much rarer these moments would become in the future. He watched John as Liz laughed good-naturedly over a comment Mom made. Her Elizabeth only mindset had only been a phase. Nearly any nickname was welcomed at this point in her life. Strangely, even though she'd moved away, you lately felt closer to her than you had in a long time. You idly scooped up more of your breakfast and chewed absentmindedly. Vegetarian, vegan, pescatarian, politarian, picky eater generally ate whatever. Vegetarian. And the meal you had reflected that. Your moms were happy to make food that fit your needs, along with dishes for themselves that didn't. Now, you often made your own food nowadays, but it wasn't only you who had a diet that excluded certain things, as Liz had been vegetarian for a while. Conversation had gone on idly without you fully taking in the words until your ears were peaked when moms would not start on a bit of town gossip. Oh, our moms aged gracefully. Uh huh. They're so they're still so pretty. And that's how I heard the news. All right, all right. Now stop wearing the lead and tell us what is this so-called news? Ma giggled as she cast a look across the table, satisfied that she had everyone's attention. Well, it turns out the Donalds won't be writing out the condo up the street as per Sunset Bird tradition for the first time in what must nearly be two decades. A chorus was gasped and shock expressions were had all around. After the initial shock, her eyebrows pinched. Ma may consider them my name, but you and Liz always viewed them exclusively as the mean old couple who would yell at anyone under 25 across their paths. Your ma continued on with the story, spreading strawberry jam over a piece of toast as she did so. They decided not to take big trips anymore. Friends and family will be visiting them at their home. Oh, that's nice for them. Have a good summer. Have a good, have a good summer, mean grandparents with no grandkids. Away from us. That's a relief. Kind of sad they can't travel anymore. I hope they're still okay, even if they are mean. My thoughts exactly, Liz. Finally, they can piss off. You didn't have anything to comment. Nothing to really comment. Be nice, Liz. You don't want to end up like them, do you? You and your sister crack smiles at the no. joke. At least they won't be here to yell at my children anymore. <laughs> Lottie. And that blunt comment got laughter from all three of you. And grossing conversation once more, you continue to chat with your family until the meal is over. Alright. So? <laughs> We're into the third step now. That's what we'll be doing next time. We're going to be starting with a bit of a crush on Cove, and with Derek having a crush on us. I'm, I'm so, I'm just, this game is so good. <laughs> I'm very happy to have the opportunity to play something like this. Oh, hi Busy Alarm 43. Um. Sorry to be ending it basically as soon as you get here, but uh, I've been playing for a while. I need to go eat and stuff, so. Um, links are down in the description to the Planetarium Twitter, Patreon, and YouTube. Uh, please do support us if you like the content. We um, upload archives of all of our streams onto YouTube, and uh, we make notifications of when we'll be streaming on Twitter. Sometimes it's just me, sometimes it's me and all the boys. It just depends. Um, other than that, you can follow my private Twitter, uh, Planet Nino, for art, for safe for work art, at Newdroid for anything 18 plus. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. We also have a red bubble where you can get merch. And yeah. Uh, we'll be doing, the next stream will be an Amori stream on Wednesday. Well, the next stream that I do will be an Amori stream on Wednesday. There might be something in between that. I'll let you guys know on Twitter when it happens. Thank you so much for joining and have a wonderful rest of your day.